Live from the Metrodome, Minnesota's best high school football teams square off to determine who is number one. Cromwell's in the prep bowl for the fourth straight year. Hillcrest Lutheran Academy's in it for the first time since 1982. It's the Cardinals against the Comets for the nine-man championship. The championship tradition continues on UPN 9 with the 1998 Prep Bowl. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to high school prep football championship games. Six games live from the Metrodome in the Twin Cities of Minneapolis. And we'll be bringing you all the action today, the play-by-play, -play, word from players and coaches throughout the day. And with all of the action this morning, we'll send it up to the press box with Roger and Rufus. Thanks, Lillian. Good morning, everybody. I'm Roger Buxton, along with Rufus Bess, formerly a Minnesota Viking, and now the head uh, football coach at Minneapolis North High School. First game today is nine-man, Cromwell against Hillcrest Lutheran Academy. Rufus, let's talk about the experience factor. Cromwell in this game for the fourth straight year. Hillcrest Lutheran has been in this game, but not this particular group of kids. The experience doesn't ensure a win, but it can be a big asset. That's true, Roger, and welcome back again. Thank you also. Um, it's a great time for Cromwell. Uh, Cromwell football has got to be something that the kids look forward to. Hey, four times in a row, can't beat that. Hillcrest coming in for the first time and having an opportunity to be there is really a great song for them. Who knows? We'll see how it goes. We'll have the introduction to the lineups after this. Session. There you see the records of the participating teams in the nine-man championship game. We're just about ready to go. Everybody's lined up. Cromwell, as we mentioned, in this uh, game for the fourth consecutive year, the uh, Cardinals have won two of the previous three, losing to Burndale in a terrific game here a year ago that Rufus and I also did. You see the uh, captains exchanging handshakes. We'll identify those guys as we go along. We'll have the introduction of the uh, coaches I believe in just a moment. Nope, they're going to go ahead. Well, we give PA announcer Dave Widener a chance to talk there, but maybe not. Rufus, we may just have to carry on. We'll set these lineups as we go. The all set to play some football. Hillcrest <laughs> Lutheran, uh, I guess if you had to pick a Cinderella team, the Fergus Falls team uh, has three losses already this season, lost two of three at one stage earlier in the season. But then has really come on as the season has progressed. Uh, they probably don't have the overall team speed that Cromwell does, but they do have the ability to throw the ball and uh, score points in that manner, something uh, that they do a little better perhaps than most nine-man teams. So that may be a factor in this uh, ball game as well. And I think that's what we're going to be looking at today. Um, you know, like you said, Cromwell was here last year, and they've been here for the last four years. So evidently they're doing a lot of things right. Um, Hillcrest coming in for the first time, having had the opportunity to get close and not quite make it to the championship. It's, it's something they did right this year, and they did it down the stretch and at the right time. And uh, So evidently, to be here, they've got to be doing something right now. Look for a very good ball. Yeah. There you see the numbers of those 378 yards per game for Cromwell. Most of those, I believe, will be on the ground. Uh, I think Cromwell will pound the ball at uh, Hillcrest on the ground all day if they can. Halvard Holovic will kick it off for Hillcrest Lutheran Academy. Deep for Cromwell, number 40, Craig Fryermuth. That's a name you will hear often today. Number 22 is Rick Smith. Holovic, a pretty good punter, but perhaps more important in terms of what may happen here this morning. Uh, probably above average field goal kicker for a nine-man school, so he may indeed be a factor in this game. And, and, and in this game, that's what it's going to take some time, you know, those little extras. There's a kickoff, and they're not going to return that one. Young man has a strong <laughs> leg. <laughs> yes, he does. A Mitch Berger-type kickoff, yeah, at least right. that we've seen here the last couple of weeks. As, as you look at the nine-man field, we'll get to that in just a second. For Cromwell, Dan Nyberg is the quarterback, Dan Elysiak, Craig Fryermuth, and Mason Hansen, Elysiak, will be the primary ball carrier, we believe. The offensive line from left to right, Bill Asp, Mike Johnson, Andy French, Seth Aho, and Seth Mowers. Johnson, French, and Aho are the big guys up front for Cromwell. See how they do clearing the holes today. They have done very well in the past for this football team. Indeed they have, Roger. And, and again, Elysiak is a big kid from last year that we saw 
and talked a lot about him. I think he's back again this year to do the same thing. He's gained almost 1,400 yards this year. We'll see how he does. They go with Hanson instead on the first play of the game. As you're looking at the nine-man field, if you haven't had a lot of experience in watching nine-man football, the field is smaller, as you may be aware, 40 yards wide, 80 yards long. So when you see a yard marker, subtract 10, and that's the easiest way to think about it. Gain of five yards for Hanson, second and five for the Cromwell Cardinals as they try to win this game for the third time in four years. That's Hanson in motion. They go at the Lysiak, and there's not much there as he's stacked up in the middle by the Hillcrest Lutheran defense. Defense seemed to come on pretty good. Um, Dan Scheid, the left end on defense. He's also the quarterback. Newt Ronovic, John Randall, and John Ronovic. Up front for Hillcrest Lutheran Academy, Nick Hanson, John Kildee, Jesse Arbuckle, Jake Carr, and Jesse Keller. The linebackers and defensive backs. Third and five for Cromwell. The Cardinals at their own 20-yard line. Early first quarter in our nine-man championship game. Nyberg the throw looking long for Firemuth. He's got him. Good catch, good catch. That was a well-thrown pass and a very well-adjusted to pass by that receiver. That'll be a Cromwell first down at the Hillcrest 36-yard line. They don't throw a lot of passes, but Friermuth is generally the guy when they want to get something done. And they seem to be effective on their throws, too. You know, like I said, Friermuth is a guy that was here last year. And um, these guys have experience. And have experience. Here's Friermuth trying to cut it inside. Gets about four yards. Bring up second and six for Cromwell. There you see the coach in the red shirt there just a moment ago. Keith Bergstedt, we'll get a better look at him, I'm sure, as the day goes along. Well, Cromwell is doing what they normally do, driving the ball down field. They'll run it and run it and run it some more. This is Hanson straight ahead, the big fullback. Inside the 30 or right at it. That'll bring up third down and short, about uh, three and a half, four yards to go for Cromwell. Right at the 30-yard line. It's Hillcrest Lutheran coach Richard Reisbrook in the uh, red jacket there just a moment ago. Play whistled down while they move the ball to the hash mark here. Third and four for the Cardinals. Hillcrest Lutheran Academy out of Fergus Falls. Nyberg will keep it himself, and he's struggling to get to the first down marker. I think he's going to be a half yard shy of that, so we'll see what they're going to do on fourth down. Generally, they'll go for it, and I imagine they will here. I imagine so, and I think uh, with that little distance to go, and I think you're out of field goal range unless you've got a secret weapon on the sideline <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> well, that's about a 55-yard field goal. You don't see a lot of punting in, uh, in nine-man football. Fourth and short for Cromwell. They took the opening kickoff, and they still have the ball with 9.03 to play in the first quarter. Straight ahead, stacked up as Hanson. I don't think he got it. Big play, big play. Big, big play, play on defense. Number 15, Nick Hanson. No surprise there. He is the Elkhurst Lutheran's leading tackler on the season. 160 tackles during the regular season. The guy's got to stay busy to get that many. Wow, and you can see he got right up in the gap and made a solid hit. That was a perfect tackle hit across and he just wrapped up and drove him to the ground. And when you make 150 tackles in a season, that's, that means you're around the ball quite a bit. Well, they go for it on fourth down. Don't get it. The ball turns over to Hillcrest Lutheran Academy, and they'll have their first shot. 8.59 to play in this first quarter of our nine-man championship game. No score between Cromwell and Hillcrest Lutheran Academy on the Menard scoreboard. Zeros all the way across. We'll be right back. KMSB Television has purchased the broadcast rights to the 1998 Minnesota State High School Prep Bowl. No broadcast, rebroadcast, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this copyrighted telecast is permitted without the written authority of KMSB Television and the Minnesota State High School League. Hillcrest Lutheran with their first possession of the game. They try and run it with Jesse Keller. Use their leading uh, game gr uh, ground gainer on the season with just over 1,000 yards, but not much there this time. There's Dan Scheid, the quarterback. A pretty good arm. We'll see some passing, I believe. Keller, John Kildee, and Jesse Arbuckle. The backs and receivers for Hillcrest. The offensive line, Nick Hanson, Alex DeWolf, John Ronovic, 
John Randall, and Knut Ronovic. As you might imagine, in nine man, you see a lot of the same names on both sides of the ball. I'm sure that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in some programs, you got to see that anyway. But loss of a yard on second 11. Again, they come up short. John Kildy, the ball carrier for Hillcrest. Mike Johnson, Seth Aho, Mason Hansen, Andy French, and Alex French across the front for Cromwell. And the secondary, Bill Asp, Dan Elysiac, Craig Fryermuth, and Jesse Jordan. Third down and about 12 for Hillcrest Lutheran Academy, so I presume we'll see Dan Scheid's first pass of the game. Big rush, he's down. Big sack, big sack on that play. And, you know, on that first drive, they really didn't get a chance to establish anything. That was number 72, Mike Johnson, making that play. And uh, Mike is a big guy. And uh... Scheid took a look. He was trying to go downfield. And they had him surrounded pretty quickly. So big loss, nine yards, fourth and 21. This time they obviously will kick it. Albert Holovic will kick it away for the... Hillcrest Lutheran Academy Comets, and he's a pretty good leg. And he, he has a pretty good average, too, about 34 yards per punt. Line that's pretty good. That's Elysiak on the return. Elysiak trying to get near midfield. Not down. No, still turning along, and he does get back to the 40-yard line, maybe just across. That's a nice return. Excuse me, Craig Fryermuth on the return. Nice return by Fryermuth in heavy traffic. So Cromwell will get their second possession of the game. We remain scoreless in our nine-man championship game with 6.58 to play in the first quarter. Well, there's Cromwell coach, coach Keith Bergstedt trying to figure out how to team his, uh, get his team on the scoreboard. Bergstead is one of those sideline guys, Rufus. He's from the sideline back to get a drink of water. Very vertical on the sideline. So he's so, constant. But he's busy. He doesn't cover a lot of mileage, but he's very busy. Here's the pitch to Elysiac down the sideline. That'll be a first down. As he's just inside the 30, gain of 11. First and 10 for Cromwell. So what you're saying, right? He's always on the move. He's on the move. He'll stay busy. Now in our next game, Randy Strand from Adrian. He's more of a... Uh, an east-west kind of guy. Okay. He's laterally down the sidelines. He'll cover a lot more mileage, but he may, you know, the energy exertion may be the same, but Strand will get a lot more mileage in than Bergstead for the days up there. First and 10 for Cromwell. They run it straight ahead. From the look of things, Cromwell may have gotten things uh, in gear now, and uh, they're starting to become more effective. They played a great um, down the defense and, you know, stopped from, um, Hill press Lutheran very um, effectively, and now they're starting to move the ball on offense. Bill Asp on the last carry for Cromwell. Gain of three yards, second and seven. Six and a half minutes to play in the nine-man championship game here at the Metrodome. There's the pitch to Elysiac again. Knocked out of bounds at about the 22, maybe the 23-yard line. That'll bring up third down. That's the same play that got the first down a moment ago, but uh, Hillcrest covered that one much better. And the thing about it, they went to the short side of the field. And when you're playing nine man, both sides seem to be short. <laughs> both sides are short when the field's only 40 yards wide. <laughs> Third and three. Now they're gonna be short. As they run the big fullback, Mason Hansen in there. But again, I'm sure they'll go for it on fourth down at the 21-yard line. It'll be fourth and about two. Well, again, we expected a lot of scoring, but I guess if you're in the prep bowl, the best championship game of the season, maybe there shouldn't be a lot of scoring. There shouldn't be a lot of scoring. Exactly. And like last year, we saw a lot of scoring for Cornwall and then got the championship and didn't have a lot. Pitch to Elysiac. Nice block there by Hanson. Elysiac inside the 15-yard line. That's a first down and then some. That was a good run, and uh, that young man has a lot of ability. Jesse Arbuckle on the tackle. Watch the block by 15 out ahead of him. There you go. Bump the man to the outside and right inside. Right inside. Pick up that first down. That's how you draw it up, right? Keep the ball moving. And the clock. And the clock. <laughs> Five and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. And Cromwell with the first major threat of the game, first and ten. 
at the Hillcrest Lutheran 15-yard line. Hanson, the big fullback, is straight ahead. He's still pumping. Nice run. Hanson inside the 10. Right at the 9-yard line. So a gain of about five and a half. Call it second and five. Mason Hanson close to 1,000 yards during the regular season with his work in the playoffs. Obviously, he's gone over that. And again, if you're not used to nine-man football, you only got to go to the 10-yard line before you, when you score your first touchdown. Straight ahead again as Cromwell continues to pound the ball in there. That's Elysiac. In the middle of that Hillcrest Lutheran line, John Randall, number 92. Bring up third down, and, uh, well, that's a long yard, yard and a half. Probably closer to two. Closer to two, I mean. Yeah, I'd say so. Third down for Cromwell. First serious threat of the ball game for either team. First down. Good run. Well, that's why you got a guy playing fullback. That's right. You need two <laughs> yards, you give it to him. Give it to him. Give it to the fullback. That's exactly right. First down, Cromwell. Kind of reminds me of the guy that uh, they were talking about yesterday doing the uh, game on TV. They give it to me, and I'll get you three yards on if you need three, and give it to me, um, and I'll get you three if you need six. So, <laughs> hey, <laughs> first and goal for the Cardinals at the Hillcrest Lutheran three-yard line. Hanson again. Near the goal line, he's in. Touchdown, Cromwell. Three yards on the touchdown run by Mason Hanson. That was a nice run by Hanson. Turned and twisted his body in there, and he made something happen. So he wanted to, he really wanted that touchdown. Here it is again. He keeps pumping. Pumps his legs, keeps himself moving, and, you know, that was, that was a tough run. He had a chance. He got hit three or four times, and he just kept spinning and twisting and made his way into the end zone. Jesse Keller, as you saw, number 40 for Hillcrest, had a shot at him at about the uh, two or one yard line. Couldn't get him. Six nothing, and, hit, and uh, Cromwell will go for two, as is common. Here's Nyberg. He's going to run in easily. Two-point conversion for the Cromwell Cardinals, and they jump out in this nine-man championship game to an early 8 to nothing lead. So Cromwell, as we anticipated, running the ball. I guess the numbers should tell us that, Rufus, when your fullback has gained almost 1,000 a, a yards during the regular season, exactly. you're a running football team. Cromwell jumps out ahead. Cromwell trying to win the nine-man championship for the third time in four years on the Menard scoreboard. They lead Hillcrest Lutheran 8 to nothing. Well, you can see from the uh, it's replay that Nyberg Hansen did a great job in running this ball. He uh, turned and twisted his body. It looked like a lead off tackle. And he just did a great job running the ball, spinning and twisting his way into the end zone. You know, that was a strong run. And like I said, when you've got a guy that can run the ball like that, it makes a difference. Then you've got Nyberg on the two-point conversion, doing a great job of bootlegging it out to the left side, uh, kind of tricking everybody to go to the other direction. There's a kickoff to Hillcrest Lutheran. Oh, play is whistled down. That's a touchback. Got to watch that 10-yard line. If it goes in the end zone, it's a touchback, and sometimes you miss it. You're not watching carefully. Anyway, they all start first and 10. 40 yards and nine plays for Cromwell. And Mason Henson again on the touchdown run. That was John Kildee back to get the uh, kickoff for Hillcrest Lutheran. First and ten. Now I imagine what Hillcrest has got to do this time. They've got to establish themselves a drive and try to make something happen. They'll run with it straight ahead. Jesse Keller on the carry for Hillcrest Lutheran. Not a whole lot there for him. Not much inside. Uh, it looked like it was going to be a big play, but all of a sudden things just closed down. And I guess that's a team speed. There's Dan Scheid, 1,500 yards passing on the season. He can throw the ball. He can throw it long, too. We'll see if that becomes a factor in this game. Throw it out in the flat, trying to get a quick hitter there. The intended receiver was Jake Carr, who brought the play in from the bench. But as you saw, throwing a bit behind him. That'll bring up third down and seven for Hillcrest Lutheran. 
They're at their own 18-yard line and down by eight in the early going. Well, obviously, they wanted to take some time off the clock, as you said, Rufus, if, if not score, at least establish something here, but all of a sudden, they're looking at third and seven. Exactly, Margie. And, and the thing is, you've got to establish something somewhere in this game so that you don't allow um, the other team to become such a big factor and start scoring up um, on consistently. Here's Shy back to throw. Out in the flat to Keller. Keller looking for the first down stick. Well short, about four yards short. Tackled out there by the other number 40 on the field, Craig Fryermuth. That'll bring up fourth down. That was a well, well set up play. You know, it looked like it had a lot of potential to go a long way, but for some reason, uh, team speed again. This will bring up fourth and four. You can see it's set up really nice. And you have one guy to beat, and all of a sudden you make the play, and uh, all of a sudden the guy's right there in your face. And now you've got to punt it away again. Halbert Holovic will kick it away for Hillcrest Lutheran. Deep to receive for Cromwell. And headed over to the sideline as Elysiac wisely lets that one go, and it's touched by Hillcrest. They don't want it to go backwards. You saw number 12 there, Jake Carr, touching the ball to kill it. It'll be first down, Cromwell. What you're giving Cromwell a chance to do now is really set the tempo of the game because right now they're up by a touchdown, an extra point, and uh, Hillcrest is winning. There you see, Fergus Falls, the home of Hillcrest Lutheran, and the Cromwell Cardinals along the North Shore. We shouldn't discount one thing, uh, Rufus, even though things are going Cromwell's way right now. We should remember that Hillcrest Lutheran scored 16 points last week before they had a first down. So they, they can do some things in the football field. Here's Elysiac near the 40-yard line, probably a couple of yards short on first down. And again, when you can do that without having a first down, you've done some things. Yeah. You know you're capable of scoring. You're around the ball. We know that much. Elysiac just across the 38-yard line. That'll bring up second down. And about five and a half. Cromwell with the ball. Two and a half minutes to play, as you see in the first quarter, and nursing an eight to nothing lead. There's Hanson, the fullback. Near first down, he's got it. Number 22 on the tackle for Hillcrest. That's Jesse Arbuckle. What you see in Cromwell's offense is that they've got two good backs that are capable of making big plays at any particular time, Roger. And uh, Hanson, as well as Elysiac, is capable of doing something uh, or scoring a, on a big play at any particular time. Well, most games, Elysiac will be their big ground gainer, but Hanson has carried a lot of the water here today, first and ten. Here's the pitch again to Elysiac, cuts it inside the block and gets near the 30-yard line. Jake Carr on the tackle for Hillcrest Lutheran, along with John Kildy, Carr number 12 and Kildy 28. And what I can see is that Cromwell is starting to establish an outside-inside game. Well, one thing they talk about a lot at Cromwell is the offensive line. Left to right, uh, guard to guard, is Mike Johnson, Andy French, and Seth Ajo. They think that is really the core of their team, and they talk a lot about that. And based on what we've seen so far, with good reason. Here's Elysia, first down inside the 25. Well, Excuse me, Rufus. Excuse me. And when you believe you can run behind these guys, it makes it that much easier for you to go in and set your offense. Again, you see the uh, quarterback is doing just a straight handoff, and you've got a nice lead blocked by Hanson, and, and Olizak does a great job running the ball off track. And I think this young man has a lot of ability. He runs the ball very well. First and 10 at the 24. They continue straight ahead. That's Hanson, the fullback. And again, when you've got two running backs that are close, you know, a thousand-yard rusher, and then your fullback is almost a thousand-yard rusher, somebody's been running the ball, and you've been doing it quite a bit. Well, I think the great danger here now for Hillcrest Lutheran Rufus is uh, Cromwell has demonstrated they can run the ball. If you let them get too far ahead, it can turn into a long morning. They need, they need to get a stop for a turnover. Here's Elysia. Close to first down territory again before he's tackled by Jesse Keller, number 40 for Hillcrest. And again, that experience plays as a, a, a big factor in the game. This is a student body right, just a smaller student body. 
<laughs> just the smallest student body. You're right. <laughs> Not as big a field, but hey, doing this, being just as effective as you would be with 11 players. Third and one for Cromwell. They lead 8-0, closing seconds of the first quarter here at the Metrodome. Firemuth probably got to the first down stick, but not a heck of a lot more. And you'll see the tie remaining in the period in the corner. Not much on the um, on on that play. I think I think the defense has really got to step and take a step back and look at themselves and say, hey, we got to establish ourselves a little bit better and stop this outside inside game. And um, until they do that, it's going to be a long day for them. Well, they needed one, and he got one plus about six inches, so that's enough. First down, Cromwell. At the Hillcrest Lutheran 13-yard line. Cromwell leading 8 to nothing. And again, they're knocking at the door. You've got about uh, 12 yards to go for a touchdown. And yep. again, when you get down that 10-yard line, you got to understand, nine-man football, you only got to go to the 10 before you score a touchdown. Well, rather than run a play, as you saw, Cromwell elected to just let the clock expire in the first period, and they'll take that 8 nothing lead to the huddle to decide what they want to do next. End of one in the nine-man championship game. Cromwell, 8. No fresh Lutheran, nothing. Well, Rufus, it's still early in the game. Second quarter just about to get underway. But obviously, Hillcrest Lutheran has to do something here to slow Cromwell down. Might we see a blitz or something like that on defense? Uh, something to change this flow of the game. I agree, Roger. you got to do something to kind of um, establish your defense. And then again, you've got to blitz somebody. You've got to take a chance here and there. If you continue to let them run inside, outside, they're going to kill you. So they score a lot of points. First quarter offense, Cromwell 109 yards, Hillcrest Lutheran 6, time of possession, there's your story, 9.55 for Cromwell, 2.05 for Hillcrest Lutheran. And when you got it like that, you've got to come up with something big, you've got to do something different. Well, you saw the flags flying as it looked like Hillcrest Lutheran jumped, maybe on the right side, we'll see John Ronovic is number 35 over there on the right end, and he might be the guy. Offside is the call. So Cromwell, with everything else going their way, gets a free five yards. And that's the least thing you need to have right now. But I'm like, I agree with you, Roger, that somewhere down the line, you've got to start establishing your defense. And uh, that's been a strong part of the team, so you've got to utilize your, your weapons. First and five for Cromwell at the Hillcrest Lutheran nine-yard line. There's Hanson again. Pushing ahead down near the probably the four we're told that mason hansen is celebrating his 18th birthday today and of course he'd like a state championship to cap off the occasion wouldn't that be nice it'd be a pretty good deal seconds on turkey and uh the state championship all in two days i mean how good can things get <laughs> <laughs> the turkey no dressing and uh look at this on the side. Hits to Elysiac. He covers the final seven yards, or excuse me, three yards for the touchdown. No, seven yards. I beg your pardon. So Dan Elysiac with a touchdown run for the Cromwell Cardinals, and that's the pitch play that's been very successful for them, and they jump out to a 14 to nothing lead. We assume they'll go for three or then two. Again, then again, Roger, here we go again. It's outside the game, and pitch it to Elysiac, and all he does is go around the corner. He's got good speed. And the speed allows them to get up to the outside before they can make the playoff. Cardinals going for two, trying to boost that lead to 16 to nothing. They give it to Hanson, the fullback, and this time he's short, so they'll have to settle for a 14 to nothing lead. The beauty of that pitch is it gets him to the corner immediately, and when you got some speed, Rufus, that's dangerous. Exactly, and when you've got a young man that can do it all, and I think Elizak is that kid on that team that can do quite a bit of things, it really makes it tough on the defense. There you see it again. You see the pitch out, and Elysiac is right there at the corner, so he's rolling right along. 11.29 to play in the first half in our nine-man championship game on the Buick scoreboard. Cromwell with a 14-0 lead. As you can see, Bill last number 36, makes a great block on this play, and all Elysiac has to do is get to the outside, which he has that team speed, and uh, he's capable of doing that at any particular time. He does a great job running, getting himself in the end zone. Cromwell will kick it off to Hillcrest Lutheran Academy. We should point out, in nine-man football, not converting on a two-point conversion can be a big deal because that is a staple of this style of football. So if you don't get one, that can come back to bite you. We'll see if uh, Hillcrest can build on that. 
That's interesting, Roger, because I'm learning something about nine-man football again this year. And I, no, I, I didn't think it was a big deal, but I imagine it can be when, you, when you're saying you're playing nine-man football and there's a lot of sport and it's going to go on during the course of the game. Andy French will kick it away for Cromwell. This is John Kildee on the return for Hillcrest Lutheran. Trying to get to the corner, he does. Up near the 43-yard line, and that's where his team will start. Kildee, 5'9", 155, and a junior at Hillcrest Lutheran. There's the Cromwell drive, 46 yards in nine, and four and a half minutes off the clock. Well, again, the... Uh, the Comets in the same situation they were in last drive, Rufus. They need to establish something. If not score, at least get some yardage, take some time off the clock, get some first downs. And that's correct, Roger, because last time they've only had the ball for about two minutes in the first quarter, and that really doesn't help your offense very much. Keeps your defense on the field, and in the long run, it's going to wear your defense down. That's Jesse Keller near the 25-yard line before he stopped. Gain of a couple. It'll be second and eight for Hillcrest Lutheran. And as we said earlier, you know, Hillcrest didn't get here by chance. They played well enough to make it to the stadium. Uh, when you're playing that oh, guide pass intercepted by Hanson. Hanson brings it inside the 20. And the last thing that Hillcrest Luther needed to have happen there was a turnover. But the interception by the all-purpose guy for Cromwell today, the fullback, Mason Hanson, playing defense, picks off the pass. You didn't need that. Yeah, that's... Shide. Just rolling right. Hanson did a great job reading that play. He kind of got underneath the pass of the, the receiver and stepped right in from the pass. And on that pass, I believe you got to go up and over instead of a line giant pass. Pass was intended for Bill Nelson. Just didn't get it to him. Nyberg is going to be sacked. Fumble. He was covered by the Cromwell Cardinals. Well, Hillcrest Lutheran with an opportunity there to turn it back the other way, but didn't quite get it. Fire move on the recovery. Here's Nyberg. Well, they knocked it out of his hands. Number 35 on the rush there. John Ronovic got the hand on it to knock it loose, but the Cardinals recover it. They lose five, but they retain possession. They're second and 15 now at the Hillcrest Lutheran 24-yard line. There's that pitch again to Olesiak near the 20. It'll bring up third down and long. And again, he went to the outside again. He's still trying that outside game. And uh, as long as it's working, you might as well keep using it. 14-0 Cromwell on top here in the early stages of the second quarter in our nine-man championship game. On that, that last play, when, that, uh, when they called that fumble, you, you would think somebody would be hustling hard enough to try to get that ball, but just didn't bounce their way this time. Third and 11 for Cromwell, a rare pass from the Cardinals right up the middle of the field. That's intercepted, and that's the big turnover that Hillcrest Lutheran was looking for. Jesse Arbuckle on the interception for the Comets. So they turn it right back and give their offense a chance to get something going. Maybe that'll get them going in the right direction, you know, a big play like this. So on the turnover, Hillcrest Lutheran will take over, still early in the second quarter. As you look at the replay, Dan Nyberg with the pass, threw it up the middle of the field, just a little short. And there's Arbuck, uh, Arbuckle with good position on the Buick scoreboard. Early second quarter at Cromwell with a 14-0 lead over Hillcrest Lutheran. Well, here's the play, Rufus. I think we'll see the ball just thrown short. That's what I see, Roger. It's just pass that was thrown, and it was tipped. Oh, it was tipped. Oh, tipped. Tipped. Okay. And you've got uh, Jesse Arbuckle, who's the team leading interceptor anyway, and Jesse made a great play of stepping up, taking the ball at the highest point. There you see the time of possession. Extremely heavily in Cromwell's favor. That's Arbuckle on the carry for the Comets. Not much there. Probably just uh, shy of the line of scrimmage. A little misdirection try to get you going in one way and come back the other way. And then you got a young man like Arbuckle making a play on the, 
on that, for that team on defense, then coming back on offense, maybe thinking he could do the same thing on offense. Loss of the yard for Arbuckle. It'll be second and 11 for Gilchrist Newton. The Comets at their own seven yard line. Tried taking the handoff. He's gonna throw over the middle. That is complete. Jesse Keller on the reception. There's Scheid. Just right over the middle. Simple play. Maybe a little underthrown, but Keller with the presence of mind to go down and get it. Every little bit helps. And when you're making plays and you're gaining yards, um, moving the ball downfield is going to help you get established your offense and, and, and maybe get you in the ground, kind of the game plan that you're looking to get into. Gain of six yards on the play, bringing up a more manageable third and five. Scheid to throw again. Looking for a man. He's got Keller again right at the first down stick. That should be enough. So the Hillcrest Lutheran Comets with their first first down of the morning. But they needed that. They, they needed that. Dan Shad is a good quarterback. You know, he has a lot of poise in the pocket. He moves himself well. And he finds the open guy. And, um, and he and did a great job throwing the pass on that play. That's a good throw because the only man who could catch it was Keller. That's exactly right. First and 10, Hillcrest at their 19-yard line. The pitch back to Keller. Looking for the corner. Gets a couple of yards out of it, maybe three. Or he's brought down by Mason Hansen, number 15. He's everywhere today for Cromwell, isn't he? I tell you, that Hanson plays ball on both sides of the, ball, of the football, and, and he moves well for a kid that plays fullback and then plays the linebacker. So he's, he has a nose for being around the ball and moving to the ball. Gain of four yards on the play, second and six for Hillcrest at their 23-yard line. So for the first time this morning, the Comet showing a little life on the offense. Bear in mind again, Cromwell failed to convert the last two-pointer. Well, oh, he's in trouble there. Arbuckle, obviously, excuse me, not Arbuckle, but John Kildy wanted to pass and uh, just had nobody to throw to. And then again, you had your man Dan Hansen on top of the play. He smelled it out, and, and he blitzed, and um, I think he tackled him for about a 10-yard loss. Mason Hansen, I'm sorry, excuse me. There you see Kildy going down right at his own 10-yard line. Kildy coming off the field. He's under his own power. Don't know if that's an equipment problem. Looks like it might be. Needs some work on his helmet, so he'll be replaced by Jake Carr very briefly. There's the middle of the uh, line both ways for Cromwell, Seth Aho. Pretty good size, 6'1", 210. And again, you got guys like Seth Aho and uh, Mason Hanson, who's been here in the past two years, and they know what it's like to be in a championship game. Tried to throw down the sideline, looking for Keller, intercepted. Olesiak with the interception, so the Cromwell Cardinals will take over again. Just shy of midfield, they'll start at their own 38-yard line. Well, the Hillcrest Lutheran Comets got a little bit going on offense, uh, but not enough to get any score. But still, they got the ball out to the middle of the field to give their defense a chance to have a little more comfort. And I think that's what they really needed. They need to give them a little bit of a break. Great interception. Just over six and a half minutes to play. Second quarter in our nine-man championship game on the Buick scoreboard. Cromwell still holding a 14 to nothing lead. Well, Cromwell has the ball again, but uh, on the plus side for Hillcrest Lutheran, the defense isn't playing at their own 20 or 25-yard line. They're near midfield, which gives them a little more opportunity to get some things done. And plus, they had a chance to rest a little bit for some of the guys who were off the field, but still, you've got to establish the offense a little more, throw a shorter pass, and maybe throw the out a little bit more. That's Elysiac just across midfield. Near the 39-yard line of Hillcrest Lutheran. Just got the uh, back of the ball across the midfield stripe. Gain of about three yards. Call it second and seven. Maybe a log seven for Cromwell. The Cardinals leading 14 to nothing. Coming up on the six-minute mark of the first half here at the Metrodome. This is the nine-man championship game. There they take the pitch and give it to Hanson straight ahead, but Hillcrest right there did a good job stacking that one up. 
And then again, when you've got your workhorses like Elisiac, Hanson, and uh, Nyberg, you got you got a team that you can really work things around, and you can do a lot with these guys. And uh, that's what we're seeing here in the first half. These guys are running, catching passes, intercepting balls, and, and really making the game a, a, a two-way, a one-sided game. Third and five for Cromwell. There at the Hillcrest 37-yard line. This is Hanson, the fullback, first down. Tripped up coming through the line. I think it was Jake Carr, number 12, who got the hand out to trip him. But that's enough for a first down. It's a good job at run, running by Hanson. Uh, puts, puts his shoulder down, bowls over guys on the left-hand side, and uh, it was a big hold. And evidently, he didn't have much to do but other than run football. First and 10, Cromwell at the Hillcrest Lutheran 31-yard line. Here's Hanson again. Big push by the offensive line, as you see. He's near the 26. And right, I think the way that Cromwell is running the football now, they're going to establish their run and then try to control this ball game by running the football. Well, it does a lot of things for them. They have the lead, so it controls the clock, number one, which is all important in the game of football, as it is in a lot of sports. Second and six on the game of four. Second man through this time is Elysiac, and he gets stacked up by a horde of red shirts. John Randall, number 92, is there for Hillcrest Lutheran. Also coming up, number 15, Nick Hansen. That was a good job on defense of stacking the play up, but, you know, you've got to stop them here in order to step, set yourself up for a better field position on uh, fourth down. And Cromwell right now is on third down conversion of four of seven. So right now they're pretty effective on third down. Third and three and the pitch again to Elysiac at the corner. There's another first down. They convert on the third down for the Cardinals as they continue to roll along on the ground here today. There's that outside inside game again. You go inside one play, come back outside the next time and this is the play they've run all morning. Again, Bill uh, getting the block on the outside, and all um, uh, all Olivia has to do is run the football. First and ten at the Hillcrest 18. Mason Hanson again, the fullback. He's inside the 50. I think that's the point of this whole play, uh, Rufus, as you point out. If Ask isn't out there making that block, the thing breaks down immediately. But he's done a good job out there on the corner. And he's doing the exit. That's right. He's doing a very good job blocking that outside man. And he's actually stringing it out some, but Elysia has enough speed to get to the outside and still make something happen. Gain of five yards, second and five for Cromwell off the Hillcrest Lutheran 13-yard line. Just over three minutes to play, first half. Hanson again. Down near the 10 and a flag flying. That's got to be one of our first penalties today, isn't it? Second one. Second one, yeah. Second penalty we've seen today. Oh, face mask. That's got to be hurt. That's yeah. got to hurt. That's a tough one for Hillcrest Lutheran. See if we can pick it up. There's the face mask call right there. That's number 95 on the defense. 35, John Ronovic. John Ronovic got the head in there. And when you turn the guy's head around, that's an automatic. That's automatic. Sometimes you can brush the mask, but if you get a hold of it and turn the guy's head, the flag flies. First and goal at the five-yard line. Go with the fullback, Hanson, at the one. And when you're reaching for anything, sometimes the face mask seems to be the closest thing around. Yeah. And, uh, that hand seems to get stuck every now and then, but it's a big tone once you do it. Well, I think you make a point that sometimes it does get stuck. It, it, it happens you know, a even lot. Even if you feel yourself getting your hand on the face mask, you'd love to let go, but sometimes <laughs> it just doesn't work. Second and goal for Cromwell at the one-yard line. Hanson. Touchdown. Mason Hansen continues to be a workhorse for Cromwell here today. He extends the lead to 20 to nothing, and I'm quite sure they'll go for two again. And again, that was just power running by Mason Hansen, a one-yard run, but hey, it looked more to like a two, three-yard run, but he just stuck his head down and, and bowled his way inside. See so, yeah, what kind of push the offensive line gets. That's what Cromwell uh, thinks is their strength right across the middle. 
lead block there by Elysiac, just enough to get into the end zone. Just enough. You had Nick Hansen in the backfield, but he wasn't able to make the play before he was able to cross the goal line. Cromwell for two. Nyberg looked like a busted play. Now he's going to throw for it. Incomplete. The ball was thrown low, even if he'd caught it. I don't believe Friermuth would have been in bounds. So, again, the two-point conversion is unsuccessful for Cromwell. But they do get another touchdown and continue to lead comfortably in this game. Is this a busted play? Nope. It, nope. It looks, looks to be good, and he just makes a bad throw. Yep, just shy. The receiver was open, but... Again, there was a two-point conversion being missed, and uh, if you say it's as big as it seems in this game, Roger, then uh, maybe down the stretch once... Um... Well, Keith Burstead doesn't have too much to be unhappy about, except those conversions at this point. Here's Hanson for the last touchdown. Wow, Hanson almost fumbled Oh, that ball. my, he did. Yes, he did. Well, I think he broke the plane, but that was about it. That ball was flying around just a bit. Hanson in that last drive, seven carries for 25 yards, so... He's the workhorse. Andy French will kick off for the Cromwell Cardinals. Deep for Bill Crest Lutheran. Number 28, John Kildy. Maybe we can get a big run back on a kick return here and set things up and uh, decide to go down and get a sto score somewhere. Yeah, Bill Crest needs a shot in the arm here. That would certainly do it. Jesse Keller also deep for the Comets. 2.25 to play in the first half, and the Cromwell Cardinals dominating the game with a 20 to nothing lead. This is Kildee. Right at the goal line with one foot in the end zone, so the touchback is called. I'm not sure I'm crazy about that rule. No. You know, that's a chance to a run back there. Exactly, and I didn't know it was such a factor in this nine-man game to, once you do step in the end zone, you can't run it out. And I think the guys have an opportunity to run it out and give him a chance to make something happen for his team sometime. Well, as you see, again, Cromwell chewing up time, 4.09 on that last drive as they go 42 yards for the touchdown. And that's all important at this stage. As they lead 20 to nothing, here's Hillcrest Lutzen on the offense at their own 15-yard line. Straight ahead, and not much there for John Kildy. Stacked up by the middle of that Cromwell defensive line. Well, the, the defense for Cromwell has been playing very well also. They made, like, as you've seen in the last two drives, they've had two interceptions, and um, it's really put Hillcrest in a situation where they've got to establish what they're going to do and continue to work with that. Short passes, I've seen to be very effective, Roger. Gain of one yard on the play, second and nine for Hillcrest Lutheran at their 16-yard line. Died with the pitch. This is Carr. Carr trying to get around the corner. He'll be a couple of yards shy of first down. The ball was loose, but I think that'll be down by contact, so Hillcrest will maintain possession. And, and that was a nice play. That was, that was really set up nice. You know, a little tall, a little misdirection. Here you can see the quarterback just spikes inside and pitches back to the wing back, coming back around, which is number 12. Uh, and, That's uh, Jake Carr. Jake Carr, and he does a great job running inside and uh, picking up good yardage. Saw a good block out there, too, by number 22, Jesse Arbuckle. Again, those names that'll keep popping up are the guys who've been making plays all year. Shy throwing on third and two. First down, the completion. Nick Hansen gets it near the 35-yard line, just shy, but that's a Hillcrest first down, and that's important for the Comets. And that's very important. Maybe, maybe we can get something going before the half. And again, Shai stands in the pocket very well, throws a very nice ball. The only person who could catch that pass was uh, Nick Hansen. Well, he's got a strong arm. That's a pretty short stroke he used there. Shai will throw again. This time he throws it out in the flat to Keller. Keller near the midfield spot before he's turned back. Might have gotten through the 39-yard line. That's going to be a gain of at least four and maybe a little more for the Comets as they take a timeout with only 41 seconds to play in the half. And, and again, what they're doing, they're keeping it short. They can't go downfield as easily as they think they can. And it's, and it's being very effective. You throw the short pass across the middle and the short pass is outside. It keeps them honest. Well, whether they score here or not, Rufus, we may well be seeing a preview of the second half. And that's what we're looking for, that maybe they can, they can figure out what they need to do and come out and set ahead and, and, like you said earlier, establish a passing game that's going to be effective for them, not for the other team. 
We'll remind you again that Hillcrest Lutheran is a pretty good kicker in Halbert Holovic, but uh, they're a good deal shy of his range, obviously, at this stage. <laughs> I, I think as he, good as he may be. <laughs> <laughs> he might like to try it, but I don't know whether he can try it from that far. No, they've got, uh, they've got a lot of yardage to make before they're in field goal range. They do have two timeouts remaining, however, so they've got a chance to get something done here. 41 seconds to play in the half. And Hillcrest Lutheran, boy, a score of any kind here would be a big boost for the Comets going to the locker room. Sure will. And I'd like to see them get 15 yards, maybe try and field goal with the same man. See what they come up with. They'll come out of a shotgun this time. Side. A little bit of a low snap, but he fielded it. Side. Almost got knocked down. Pass is intercepted. Oh. So Shide, in danger of being sacked, threw it out there. The pass was intercepted by number 36, Bill Asp. Oh, that's a huge play for Cromwell and a very disappointing play for yeah. Hillcrest Lutheran, obviously. And they, were, and they had so much going for themselves. They actually should have just thrown this ball away. I could see the pressure coming. But, you know, in those kind of situations, the coach usually trying to tell you to take the sack or even just throw the ball away where nobody can catch it. And again, here you got a young man who's a... You know, a senior quarterback trying to make a play. Yeah. And it's tough to indict him for that. Just came up the wrong way for you. He'll on that one. Exactly. Cromwell will throw the ball. That's completed and out of bounds. And a nice catch by number 82 of the uh, Cromwell Cardinals, Seth Mowers. Doesn't catch many, but that was a very good catch along the sideline, putting Cromwell in position to do some more damage before halftime. And you see right now, Cromwell isn't taking any chances they're, they're, they're going coming right at him you know they, they're trying to get as many points as they can before the half and maybe just establish oh. themselves for the second half that's a good catch that was a very good catch yeah, those arms out there and caught it on the fingertips you get another look at it from a different angle caught couldn't in stay in stride. bounds but they don't care because it stops the clock anyway exactly and he caught it in stride as well Cromwell with three timeouts to play or he left in the half and 31 seconds still to play let's throw again same play the other way. Flyer move for the touchdown. 18 yards on the touchdown pass. Nyberg to Flyer move. And that was a great catch. You know, he threw the ball to the outside. Defensive back got turned. And, and all of a sudden, you had to move making a great catch. Well, that's a backbreaker for Hillcrest Lutheran. There's Firemuth. That car turned around a little bit. Turned around and good catch by this young man. Did a great job of putting his body in, and he knew where he had to come down. They'll go for two again, leading 26 to nothing. And they get the two-point conversion with the fullback, Hanson. Well, that's a huge turn of events in the last minute of this half on the plus side for Cromwell, and certainly on the negative side for Hillcrest Lutheran. You're right, right. It's two plays, and you score. Wow. This is what they've been doing all day. And again, that line is doing a great job blocking this side with the lead block by uh, number, 30, uh, number 35. And, uh, and then you had Mason Hansen just running and strong in behind him. Here's the touchdown pass again, an 18-yarder from Nyberg to Fryermuth. You can see Carr, the defensive back, number 12, that is back to the play, and that was enough. By the time you realized the pass was about there, it was too late to get turned around and make a play on it. And that's a huge play for Cromwell as they jump out now to a 28 to nothing lead. Now, as a defensive back, you learn. You look when the receiver looks, but you, sometimes you look just a little bit too late and the ball is already there, and that's what happened on that play. Are you speaking from personal experience? I am speaking from personal experience. <laughs> <laughs> speaking from experience, it happens. <laughs> it happens. I'm sorry, you can't lob that softball up there for me. It's too easy. Here's Kilney on the run back for Hillcrest Lutheran. John Kilney takes it out near the 25-yard line. Probably the 23 and a half or four is where they'll start, but only 20 seconds remaining in the half for Hillcrest Lutheran. And an awful lot of field to negotiate if they're going to get anything on the board. Well, that's uh, economic use of your offense. 10 seconds, 42 yards. That's not bad. Nope. That's not bad at all. Looks like we've got a penalty on yep, this play. penalty on the play. Didn't see it. I don't know what the uh, call was. Oh, personal foul. 
So a little extra there for Hillcrest. Now they'll have first and ten. Well, we still may get a chance to see this. Game. Yeah, maybe so. They got 20 seconds to get it upfield. They're at their own 33-yard line. Well, they'll run it instead. A big hole up the middle. This is Kennedy inside Cromwell territory. And still two timeouts for Hillcrest, and they take one immediately. Well, I'm sure Cromwell, like the rest of us, was thinking fast, and boom. Exactly. And, and, and then, again, there was a big hole inside. And Kildy just hit it straight up and uh, ran hard. Oh, there's some nice blocking up front. Look at that hole. Holy cow. Mm. That's what a running back likes to see. So, again, we've got time for, for them to get another 10 yards, and then, again, we may see this field goal kicker, Hollebeck. That hole was so big, you saw the left guard, Alex DeWolf, number 52, kind of standing there, and nobody to block. <laughs> <laughs> but he couldn't go downfield. He was just hoping himself. <laughs> I'm sure he was thinking, why can't it be like this all the time? <laughs> so Hillcrest Lutheran with a timeout remaining, 15 seconds to play in the first half, as first and 10 at the Cromwell 32-yard line. Well, that should be good for a couple of plays for sure, Rufus. You can throw a couple of passes. You can, but you got to be safe on these. You don't want to turn it over at this point in the, in the handoff. You want to try to get something. Drive again from the shotgun. Going along down the middle, there's nobody there. The intended receiver, number 22, Jesse Arbuckle. But uh, thrown over everybody, including the defensive backs. And like you said, he, he wanted to make sure he get a pass off, but he didn't want to get it intercepted. Only four seconds to lapse. So. And you still have a timeout. So you still got an opportunity to to get in field goal range and then take a chance at a field goal. You know, that, if it weren't for that last Cromwell touchdown, they might be thinking field goal here, but I, I think that probably changes when they're down 28 nothing. I think so. It made you think yeah. about a touchdown more than a field goal. I, I think so. Guy the floor again. This is Keller getting to the sideline. Got maybe a yard on the play, not much more. Stopping the clock with six seconds. Well, they're going to throw one to the end zone here. He's got to. Yep. And, and then again, he may just line, him, <clears throat> line everybody up on one side and throw, uh, throw it downfield and hope he can get a penalty. Well, it's not a bad play at this stage. At worst, you get a jump ball in the end zone, and if you're lucky, you get an interference or something, and you've still got a chance. Sure do. It'll be third and about eight and a half. Well, again, oh, he got a well. penalty. I apologize, we missed the flag. Okay, we've got an opportunity for well, a Now they got a chance. Play. Yes, sir. At the 20-yard line. This kid has a flag. strong leg. We're going to see what he can do. 28, it'll be 38 yards overall for Holovic. 37, excuse me, make it 37 off the tee. Oh, line drive, didn't get it up high enough. And so Holovic had a shot. And, and at this point, I think any score would have given them some life, you know, would have given them a little bit of momentum going into the half, but that didn't happen. And uh, the kid that has his very strong leg, but, you know, being rushed a little bit, I think he kind of took his head out of there and uh, didn't make a good kick. Obviously, we were mistaken. There was no penalty on that last sequence. They were merely resetting the ball on the field, as you have to do when it's only an 80-yard field for the field goal attempt. So no penalty on that last sequence, just uh, resetting the ball so he could try the field goal. Again, I've learned something new. <laughs> <laughs> only two seconds to play. And I think they're just going to take me and take it in at halftime, talk about it a little bit, and come back out. Well, I know I'd be disappointed if they didn't. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> then you've got time of possession. Cromwell, 15 minutes, 20 seconds. And then you've got Hillcrest Lutheran with only eight minutes of uh, possession. And that really plays dividends in the, in the scoring year. All right, one half of the game in the books. And the Cromwell Cardinals with what appears to be a very comfortable 28-0 lead. Here's Lillian with Coach Richard Grisbrook. That's right, uh, Coach. Uh, tough start in the first half here at 28 Surrey. What are you going to talk to your team and uh, locker room? Well, I think we got to come up and play physical in the, in the second half now. They're a, they're a very potent offense, both running and passing. And uh, we're just going to step it up and play better now in the second half. Our guys can do it. How can you contend Mason Hansen? He's having one heck of a first half for Cromwell. Well, he is. He's a hard runner. And our linebacker has got to come up, take the hit, take and wrap him up, bring him down. we got to gang tackle these guys. They're a tough football team. 
How much of this is about experience, Cromwell returning, of course, your first appearance? Well, I think it plays a part, but our guys have played the heart and soul of the last eight games. They've given everything they got. We always play a better second half. Okay, what are you going to look for? What are you going to tell the guys to keep their heads up? It's only 28-0. Well, it, it's a pretty big deficit to come back, but I think we just come out and do the best that we can uh, with the talent that uh, the good Lord's been giving these guys, and they'll do the job. They played a lot of heart and soul all, all year long, and uh, they'll do it in the second half. Would have been nice to get that field goal there. Just in the last year, able to make the run. I think everybody's expecting the pass play, and he managed to break up through the hole. Well, that's right. He's uh, he's kicked a, a field goal to help us win the game against the Verndale team, and and uh, he's uh, kicked some extra points for us. Uh, we thought he could do it, and we thought, oh, why not? This uh, fun. Let's give it a try. And your quarterback type, he's having a tough time today, kind of getting used to the field. Maybe his first time here as well. Well, he's not used to passing the ball that that quick either. Our offensive line's got to move their feet and give him a little bit more protection on the second half. All right, coach. Good luck, and I'm sure we'll see lots of action coming back. Coach Press Lutheran, and we'll have everything plus more halftime interviews coming right up. and you've got high school prep football here and we've got lots of action the first game nine-man game hillcrest lutheran behind 28 to 0 against cromwell and it's been a big game so far for the first start lots of scoring and a lot more action to come we've got the halftime interviews right now and we're talking with john bartz who's the tournament director this year john what a start yeah good start a little bit lopsided to begin with, but that's all right. It's a championship game. It's a good game. And it's an opportunity for all of these uh, young players and fans to come together, which is what high school football is all about this time of year. That's right. Give them an opportunity to participate in something they'll never forget, playing in the Metrodome. So that's what it's all about. Absolutely. And this is kind of a special game here, the nine-man player game. Some changes are coming forward in the future. We've broadened the classes, given some more opportunities for playing time. Talk a little bit about that and how those changes have affected the tournaments here. Well, the football coaches requested, the nine-man football coaches requested that we change the field dimension for next year, and we're going to do that. The board approved it. We got uh, permission from the National Federation to do it. So we're going to lengthen the field to 100. Uh, we're going to keep the width, though. So it's going to be 100 by 40 for next year. And uh, that's what the nine-man coaches wanted. They, they felt that the penalties and, and everything with, uh, associated with the game would be consistent with 11-man football. And so uh, we're going to try it next year. And, and uh, the survey I did for, for all the schools indicated that uh, the uh, nine-man coaches were overwhelmingly in approval of it. I feel like they could make more plays or be more action on the field that way. And, and if so, by lengthening the field, why not widen it as well? Well, they, they feel that uh, somebody that maybe has that scat back can run around them with only nine men. So this way, uh, last week uh, in both the semifinal games, I don't know that there was a, a, a kickoff return because the boys kick them into the end zone. Consequently, you eliminate one of the most exciting plays in football. So that's what I know the nine-man coaches are thinking about. Uh, hopefully they'll be able to make that change in the future, too. Is that on the horizon, letting the guys run the ball right out of the, right out of the end zone? Well, I've been on the Football Rules Committee, the National Committee, for 14 years, and, and they've, we've turned it down. Uh, personally, I'm not against it, but there are some. And each year I see it changing, and uh, I, I don't see the difference from running the ball from, uh, say, 99 yards or at, to 100 yards if you're across the goal line. But... There are some old proponents that feel it's a safety issue, and I hopefully maybe we'll get it through this year. Okay, John Bartz, uh, tournament director here at this year's high school prep bowl championship. He's got lots of experience and lots of changes, and we'll have more coming up right after this. Welcome back, everybody. We're live from the Metrodome in the Twin Cities, and we're bringing you on the air high school prep bowl football action we're at halftime right now hillcrest lutheran is behind they're playing cromwell and it's hillcrest's first time in the uh, metrodome here cromwell's got a lot of experience in this dome and is showing so far 28 to 0 but part of the game is coming to the metrodome and with me now is candace berg who's cheerleader from the uh cheerleader coach i should say from hillcrest lutheran uh, how are you going to get your team uh, going up this season oh how are we going to get them going today you know, they're going to come back out of the locker room fired up. We may not pull off this game, but they're going to feel so good about themselves for being here. And they're 
fabulous group of guys. Now, a lot of folks probably don't know that Hillcrest Lutheran has a lot of out-of-state players right. coming here just to play this game. How does that happen? Well, we are as a private Lutheran school from a church body called the Lutheran Brethren. We have about 160 students, and half of them live in the dormitory, and the other half come from the community of Fergus Falls. So many parents send their children here because they would like the private education, the small classes, the emphasis on being able to share about the things of the Lord and stuff like that. So it's wonderful. I have cheerleaders from Montana, from South Dakota, and from Arizona right now, so it's great. All of this in Fergus Falls, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, I'll tell yeah. you that. All of the players from out of state, do you think any of that affects any of their play when they come to a big tournament like this? Oh, you know, some of them have no idea what is happening yet. Uh, well, obviously they do now, but we have like 25 kids that come from Norway, and for them to be here is just exciting. They have nothing to compare it to in Norway. Our kicker is a Norwegian guy. So we're not sure he understands everything about football, but he knows how to kick that ball real well. Do you do any recruiting for Hillcrest then? No, we don't recruit. We just, you know, no, there's no recruiting. We're just happy to have a school. Most of these kids don't come because of the athletics. They come for the, the uh, Christian environment. And the fact that we're here at the state tournament is fabulous. What an extra little perk. One accomplishment, that's for sure, for Hillcrest Lutheran. And you see, that's what it's all about here at the Metrodome, and an opportunity for kids and parents and families to come together and enjoy a football game, win or lose yeah. in the champion. Let me just say, the community of Fergus Falls has been so fabulous supporting Hillcrest because we're a private school. We don't all come from Fergus Falls, and we have a big, wonderful public school in Fergus Falls. But the community's been behind us all the way. When we won last week, they announced it in Walmart, and the whole store applauded. There's signs on the marquee. We have fans from Ashby who we defeated. Well, we wish you the and best of luck here. in the tournament today. Good luck in the second yeah. half. Thank you very and enjoy much. Enjoy your, your trip here. That's Thank it for much. now for halftime. This uh, is brought to you by Northland Ford. We'll have more play-by-play -play action coming up in a loaded second half. We've got high school prep football action. We're just finishing up halftime. We've got a big second half. Hillcrest Lutheran behind 28-0 against Cromwell. And let's go back upstairs to Roger and Rufus for more action. All right. Thank you, Lillian. Uh, obviously, Rufus, we've talked a bit about uh, what Hillcrest Lutheran is, is going to do in the second half. We think they may try and throw some short passes, try and open the game up a little bit. Less Milk Emergency by T.J. Wright, age 11. In the big city... ...about themselves. And secondly, we're going to get back in the game. I think you're right, Roger. And the thing that Hillcrest has got to do, like you said, throw the short pass, throw the little swing pass to the back, throw the swing pass outside to the, um, the, the, the wide receiver, and then throw down the middle for the, to the tight end. You've had some things that you were able to make some success from last time, and uh, you've got to come back to the second half and do that. Well, obviously, the first half, all Cromwell, so let's take a look at some of the highlights. Uh, you're going to see a lot of guys in white running into the end zone. Here's the fullback, Mason Hansen, with the first score of the game. This was three yards. And your fullback, Rufus, doesn't score touchdowns unless you're getting a good push up front. Exactly, and you've got to have good blocking up front, and that's what they're getting. You've got some good inside linemen, and in the and thing about it, Olizak does a good job running this seven-yard play, and then all of a sudden you've got... Uh, nine, um, Hanson coming off the outside, making a strong run. Well, you saw uh, uh, Asp, we talked about him, number 36, Bill Asp, making that block on the corner for uh, Cromwell, and that's a key if, to that play. Elysiac's not going to get around that corner unless Asp is doing a good job, and he is. Here's Hanson again, this time from about two yards away. Uh, the, the push wasn't quite as good that time. Hanson had to do a lot of work himself, but he got into the end zone. That made it 20 to nothing as uh, Cromwell failed on two consecutive two-point conversions. And this was the crusher probably uh, in the game to this point. That's the 18-yard touchdown pass from Nyberg to Fryermuth in the last minute of play in the first half. And that had to hurt. There was only 41 seconds left in the half, and we probably thought that Crom Cromwell was going to run the ball. But they came out in two passes, and 10 seconds scored on another touchdown, and we going to set the score out in front. Well, there are the big numbers, of course, all heavily in favor of Cromwell. And the time of possession is as big as anything, uh, nearly twice as long as that of Hillcrest Lutheran. And uh, obviously, when uh, the other team doesn't have the ball, they can't do anything with it. And I would think that Cromwell will just keep pounding at him if they can. As a coach and a player, you understand that you've got to have ball, you've got to have uh, time of possession. If you're not having a lot of time of possession, you've got to be scoring some points. 
And uh, that's what Newcrest is not really doing right now. Maybe in the second half, they'll come out with a different game plan and uh, become more effective in the second half. But right now, Cromwell is leading in all categories. Well, the two yards rushing for Hillcrest is what leads us to believe they might go with a little more short passing because they've got to get something going offensively and they've got to get that Cromwell defense running a bit. Right now, they haven't had to uh, run the field very much. Not at all, and they're really playing a, a loose defense, and they're doing some things uh, probably of what they do very well, and that's play back off the ball, and they've got some great athletes back there with Onisiak and the other guys, and they're making big plays, and that's what it's going to take to win this championship game. The big plays are a factor today, and uh, when you get to this level and you get in the championship, you've got to have a few big plays on your side. A year ago in this game, Cromwell's winning streak ended at 38 games as they were beaten by Verndale, in the nine-man championship game, but uh, boy, the Comets are, or not the Comets, rather, but the Cardinals right back in here for more, so they're trying to win their third in the last four years. And uh, and that's correct, Roger. You said they lost last year, and here they are right back. Burnell is not here. So that says dividends about Cromwell's program, and uh, evidently the Cardinals play very well each year, and year in, year out, and they do what they have to do to get to this level. And um, again, they're here, and I think this year they want to win. Well, those folks have a lot to feel good about, the Cromwell cheering section. Not, uh, not too much gone wrong so far today for them. <laughs> no, they've, they've had everything on their side at, up to this point. And um, I think they're coming out with the second half with the same kind of intensity. And again, with Hillcrest, they've got, just got to come out and get one score, and maybe they'll find a way to keep, continue to maintain some ball control and um, go down and do some more um, big plays. First of six games today. If you like football, boy, today is your day. Uh, make a sandwich. You could have breakfast, lunch, and dinner in front of the television today. No question. This would be football guy heaven, wouldn't it? <laughs> hey, after Thanksgiving, eat a few leftovers and uh, <laughs> sit back and watch football. That's all right. <laughs> you could finish off there. You could have uh, what? Uh, you can't have turkey for breakfast. You could have a turkey sandwich for lunch. You have leftover turkey for dinner. I don't know what you do for breakfast. Turkey omelet, that doesn't exactly <laughs> ring, does it? <laughs> Not quite, <laughs> but I think you can make a go for it, though. Well, you know. <laughs> I suppose. Well, Class A coming up next. This is a rematch of last year's uh, championship game. That was won by Cook County by a single point, 13 to 12. And both teams coming into this game undefeated, so that should be a pretty good tussle. We expect it will be. Class AA, bold against Monoman. Monoman, uh, an amazing winner in the semifinals last week as they scored a touchdown in the closing seconds and had to make two tries at the two-point conversion and got it to advance. Uh, maybe the last game for Monoman coach Ken Bauman. We don't know. He won't say so, but it's possible. Jackson County Central, the loser to Albany in last year's 3A game, back for another try. They'll play fully, fully the team that eliminated Albany from the playoffs this year, so there's some tie in there. That should be a good football game. In 4A, Owatonna against Hutchinson. Hutchinson coach Grady Rossberg, uh, we believe, is calling it quits for sure, so he'd like to take his team out in style with a win here today. And the 5A matchup, the Woodbury Royals, who uh, have made a point of saying, gee, we're surprised because we thought we were going to finish fourth in our conference. <laughs> Although I'm not sure you can get to 12-1 and one by being that bad. Anyway, <laughs> Champlain Park, 9-1 uh, and one coming into the game. They'll play for the 5A title. Both those teams in this tournament for the first time, so somebody's going to have a, a great first time uh, a record uh, in the prep bowl. That's the lineup for the rest of the day, but right now we still have uh, a half of the nine-man game to play. 24 minutes to go, and uh, Hillcrest Lutheran Academy needs to do something big to get back in this game. Well, they're going to be receiving the ball, so, hey, maybe they, they talked about it at halftime. The coach sounded very positive about himself going into the halftime. And the one thing he mentioned, Roger, was that he, he wanted the kids to have fun. When he tried that field goal late in the game, he said the kids have been kicking. Hollerback, that is, has been kicking well for them all season. And he, he said that he just wanted to have a little fun, you know, before the halftime. And I think that's what the game is all about, having the fun. And when you reach this point in the game, uh, you know, you, you, you're here in the championship, and you've got to continue to do what you've done during the season. Well, and he said they play better in the second half. That'll be, have to be the case. That's right. French will kick it off for Cromwell. Keller is deep along with Kildy, and this is Keller. Takes the handoff. Keller still has it. Looking for a block. He's got some room. And he's bounced down at about the 22-yard line. Well, we saw something new right away. You know, a little fake return here and there, and... Uh, 
you know, kind of got a little misdirection by the deep by the return and turn team and uh, they made a nice return on that play. Well, I think at this, maybe not at this stage, Rufus, but if it gets much deeper in the game, they're going to need to try a couple of trick plays. Mm -hmm. They don't want to leave anything on the field. Let's get through the whole playbook here today if that's what it takes. And that's what you got to do as a coach. You know, you think that way and, um, you know, why, why leave it for next year? First and ten, Hillcrest Lutheran. Gets back to Keller. Looking for a block on the outside. Gets a couple of yards near the 25-yard line before he's forced out of bounds. Over there for Cromwell, number 15, Mason Hansen, who's been a busy guy here today. It'll be second down. A couple of yards of the play. Make it second and eight. There you see the pitch, and Keller trying to get a block there from Kildee. The student by the right, a little toss play, just try to get to the outside, and maybe they're going to try to do some of the same things that Trumbo has done again, the outside inside game. That was a Legiac on the tackle, number 17. Make sure they get that right. A little misdirection play with Carr. He's across the 25, close to the 27. Seth Aho, number 56, on the stop for Cromwell. The Cardinals leading 28 to nothing, early stages of the third quarter. They'll be third and six for Hillcrest Lutheran. We mentioned before the game began, Hillcrest Lutheran has been runner-up in this tournament three times, but not in recent years. So none of these kids have been in this position before. That's right, and, 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 and Cromwell has been here. And they, like I said, last year they became the uh, runner-up team to the championship. And um, so, again, they're back, and they want to establish themselves. And Hillcrest Lutheran, like I said, has nothing to be ashamed of and continue to play the game. And the game, there's still a lot of time left in this ball game. Well, some free yardage there for Hillcrest. Offside the call against Cromwell as one of the defenders jump. So still third down, but now about a yard to go. So that's a bonus for Hillcrest. Guide is the quarterback. He's going to throw for the first down, complete. Matt Hansen on the rear, Nick Hansen rather, on the reception for the Comets. And he's into Cromwell territory, so first down for the Hillcrest Academy Comets. Well, they crossed everybody up there. I think it's a running play, but there's the short pass, and Hansen moves it into Cromwell territory. And on a short play like that, you you think everybody's looking to run. And um, that was a well-established play, well-designed play. And um, you, you got the first down. And, hey, maybe that's what we said in the halftime. They've got to do this. First and 10 at the 38, straight ahead. And a flag down. And I think we've got a face mask. That's John Kildee. Probably a face mask in a pile like that. That's the call. Face mask. So... Very quickly, some bonus yards on penalties here for Hillcrest. See if they can pick it out. There it is, right there. Well, pretty hard to disguise that one. That's a lead yet. Yeah, and Kilton did a good job running hard on that play. And I think that's what caused that play at the end. Because he was stacked up, and then all of a sudden, you know, he saw the hand come in, and Lee Jack just couldn't get enough of the jersey and he kind of grabbed that face mask and that. Well, they tackle on the 10 yards. It's first and 10 Hillcrest at the Cromwell 22-yard line. Guy going, completes the pass to Runovic. Runovic inside the 20 before he's wrestled down. Mason Hansen on the tackle for Cromwell. They may have found something, you know, and... Just a short pass to Ronovic. Dragged down by Hanson. Does two things. The short passes really are not typically very dangerous in terms of ball possession. And if you got your quarterback moving, it gives him a little more opportunity to survey the field. So Exactly. And when you've got a team like Cromwell that flies to the ball, it really kind of um, puts you at an advantage, of, uh, helps you equalize yourself along the way. That's Jesse Keller near the 15-yard line before he's driven back. Craig Fryermuth there for Cromwell. Be a couple of yards, about two and a half yards shy of first down. It'll be third and a long two and for you, Hillcrest. Excuse me. And what you've done now, you've really had a chance to keep um, Cromwell's defense on the field a little bit. And it's given them a chance to kind of establish a few plays here and there. And uh, you're making them play some balls that maybe they won't be as effective. Third and two, shy close for the first down. This is Kildee. Kildee in the end zone. Touchdown with a flag down. What a great run on that play. That was a good class out of the backfield to Kildee. 
and he just took the extra effort to make itself in the end zone. Cromwell celebrating like it's going to go against Hillcrest, and it apparently will. So a mm. touchdown negated. Clipping is the call. Oh, that's a tough one. Mm -hmm. That is a tough one. And you were doing so well, you know. 15-yard touchdown pass from Dan Scheid to John Kildy will be negated by a penalty. Here's the call. Clipping, as you see, so a backbreaker there for Hillcrest, but we'll see if they bounce back. Well, they, they figured out a few things. Oh, and, uh, they're taking what they're give, being given, and then and again, they may come back. Mm. There you saw the clip right there. Yep, that's what you saw. You saw the guy come across, put his head in the back, and you can't do that. Hildy diving for the end zone. The pass is completed inside the 10-yard line. Again, Nick Hansen, the young freshman, caught a couple of big passes on this drive for Hillcrest Lutheran. Well, Roger, what you're seeing is that they're still doing the same thing. First down. This was a very nice throw and catch. You know, Nick Hansen does a great job of putting his body in position the way he can catch the ball, and uh, the, only, the only person that could have gotten that pass was him. Ball maybe thrown just a tad behind him, but as you point out, he got himself turned around. First and goal at the 10-yard line. Kildy stacked up at the line of scrimmage. A lot of white shirts there. Hansen is number 15. Number 36 is Bill Asp, and I think they had some help. Nowhere to go on that play. Unless that was a blown play, I didn't see a blocker in front, so. Second and 10, second and goal, I should say, at the 10-yard line for Hillcrest Lutheran. Their first real threat of the day. Guide will throw. This is Keller, has it go off his fingertips. That'll bring up third and goal at the 10-yard line. Even if Jesse Keller had made that reception, he had a lot of company coming up to meet him, so I don't know that there was a lot developing on that play and with size passing he's nine of 13 in the first half and he's had three interceptions 62 yards and this young man is a passer and he's great has great poise in the pocket and he does a very good job moving around also but uh, i think what you got to do is use his strength and that's moving him around and throwing the ball short well the question is rufus if you're down 28 nothing is this four down territory and here probably is no question you've got to go for them right now i think we've got one hansen for the touchdown 10 yards on the touchdown pass from side so nick hansen the young freshman three catches during that drive including a 10 yarder for a touchdown and he'll press lutheran on the board in this nine-man game that was a nice pass by shy to hansen uh, he just dropped back, looked play action, looked to the right, and Hanson's wide open on the left side. He's wide open there, too, isn't Wide open. Actually got behind that defensive back. He was yep. looking in the backfield. Belichiak uh, couldn't keep track of him. Pitch back for the killer for the two-point conversion. He gets to the corner. Jesse Keller for the two-point conversion. That's got to make the coach feel pretty good. You come in, come out the second half, and you establish yourself right away. You come down, you take a long drive, and even though you had a penalty that brought negated the touchdown, you came back and you fought hard and did the same thing, scored again. Well, I think too. Here's Carr taking the snap instead of Shy, the normal quarterback, and there's the pitch back to Keller. What they've done here with uh, well over a quarter and a half to go, they've turned this into a two-possession game. So Hillcrest Lutheran with that one drive right back in it, 8:16 to play third quarter on the U.S. Bank scoreboard. Cromwell leading 28 to 8. Well, I need to backpedal. It was not a two-possession uh, two game now, unless that was a six-point conversion. I don't believe that it was. So. <laughs> it's 28 to 8. There's the kickoff by Holovic. Well through the end zone. So no run back on that one, obviously. Rick Smith will have to go back and chase it down for Cromwell just to give the official a hand. All right. I think we kind of we saw what his leg was like, you know, really. Now, he slips behind Elysiac, number 17. There you see him. Hanson's behind him, and he's getting no help from the safety back there, and uh, that's an easy catch for a touchdown by Hanson. Nick Hanson, the young freshman, is having a pretty good game here in the big game of the year for his team. Big day for him for Nick Hanson. Four receptions, 42 yards, and a touchdown. Cromwell, first and 10. They go straight ahead with a big fullback. Not much there this time. Hanson got a yard, maybe two. See where they mark it. They're going to give him a couple. 
It'll be second and eight. Cromwell at their own 17-yard line. That was a nice 10-play drive for, mm -hmm. for um, Hillcrest Lutheran. They had 10 plays, 57 yards. Plus, you had a big penalty call uh, for clipping, and uh, you still made something happen. And I think that's what you need to stamp yourself with in the second half. Well, they gave their defense some rest, too. They These sure guys did. are a little fresher than they were in the first half, because they spent an awful lot of time on the field. Nyberg. He's back at the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third and ten. Newt Ronovic, number 86 on the stop. Senior, six feet, 200 pounds. And now you've got a different attitude of these uh, Hillcrest Lutheran guys playing the ball, playing this ball game now. They're playing a little bit more fire in the, under their belt. They, they're being a little bit more aggressive. And that's what it's going to take for them to really get back to this game. Still got a lot of time left. Oh, absolutely. Coming up on seven minutes to play in the third quarter. Third and ten for Cromwell. They'll run for it. Here's Elysiac trying to get around the corner. Gets four yards. And at fourth and six, even though you don't see a lot of punts in nine, man, I'd imagine we'll see one here. It's a guy that just got student body right. You got a toss going to the right side with a lead blocker, but uh, Hillcrest Lutheran did a great job getting outside and stopping this play. And uh, what we got right now is a fourth down play. A lot of coverage there. Nick Hansen over there for Hillcrest, among others. So a punting situation. Elysiac to kick it away for Cromwell and a flag down. Looks like it's going to be against Cromwell. Procedure penalty. That'll tack a little more on. And barring something unforeseen, Hillcrest is going to get terrific field position here. No question. And then again, you've got, you say, you still got a half of the quarters to go plus another quarter. And um, right now, if you get a score right away and come back and stop him again and score again, you've got a really good ball game. There's Elysiac to punt. Killer is the deep man for Hillcrest. Line drive, catches He's it on the fly. Line. And Hillcrest will start first and ten at the Cromwell 33-yard line. So excellent field position coming up for Hillcrest Lutheran as suddenly the momentum of the game has turned just a little bit with still over six minutes to play in the third quarter. Hillcrest Lutheran with a 20-point 20, uh, 20 deficit, but with the ball. Turned around in the backfield. We'll lose a couple on that one. Hansen is there. Among others, Jesse Jordan also there, number 12. There's the uh, location of these two schools, Fergus Falls, the home of Hillcrest Lutheran. I bet they got snow in Cromwell. Haven't they? I think so. Yeah. But, but, I, but I still don't think anybody has any love lost for either, each other. Well, they could play outside here today. Yeah. 50 some degrees? Definitely. And uh, I know we talked about it earlier last year. We were coming up here in snow. That's right. I drove down to the dome in snow last year. The pass intended for Keller is incomplete. That'll bring up third. And 11. So big play coming up here for Hillcrest Lutheran as they try and make something out of this good field position. Shide forced out of the pocket. That was a catchable ball. I'd say so. Yep. In his hand. I'm sure Jesse Keller would like to have another shot at that one. Third and 11. Tried to throw. Oh, incomplete. In and out of the hands of Nick Hansen. And a good defensive play there by... Mason Hansen just got enough of the hand in there to knock it loose. That looked like a completed pass right up to the last moment. And there you had Elizak making a good defensive play, and uh, that's what you got to do. But if he catches this ball, he's got a big he's got a big gain or even a touchdown. Actually, You're right. You're right, Elizak. My mistake. I thought it was Hansen. Elizak with the defensive play will get the credit where credit is due. So punting situation. Holovec will kick it away. For Hillcrest, Elysiac is deep for Cromwell. Now well, he's kicking for the side. Nope, not, not, not going to call a fair catch. So Elysiac with a fair catch. Cromwell will start first and 10 at their own 24-yard line. On the U.S. Bank scoreboard, Cromwell with a possession coming up, and they lead it 28-8. to eight. Well, there's Cromwell coach Keith Bergstedt 
I guess he ought to feel fairly comfortable. His team has a 20-point lead and the ball as we resume play. Richard Risbrook, probably a little less so for Hillcrest. Straight ahead, Hanson, the fullback. Gain of about five. But he's got to feel a little better since the team came out in the second half and did some of the things he probably talked about at halftime. And all he wants them to do now probably is just continue to play the way they did in the second half. And uh, he'll, be, he'll feel pretty good. Gain of three on the play. I guess his knee was down. So gain of three, second and seven for Cromwell at their 17-yard line. There's that pitch to Elysiac and the block by Asp and a first down. We've seen a lot of that today. I would think this, this is the crunch time of the game, I think, right here, Rufus, because if Cromwell chews up the clock and goes for another touchdown, this game may be over. It may it, it make it very tough for, for yeah. Lutheran to come back and uh, make some plays and score enough points in order to be able to win this ball game. Right now, what they've got to do is establish, again, stop the run and make sure that they put them in a passing game because right now I don't see Cromwell liking the pass. No. Well, but they're capable of doing it. I think they've had a little experience at it, I would imagine. <laughs> so. Straight ahead, the quarterback, Dan Nyberg. I think Hillcrest needs to make something happen here on defense. Or this game may get away from them right at this stage. 4.20 to play in the third quarter. That'll bring up second down. Gain of three. It'll be second and seven. Cromwell at their own 31-yard line. Still haven't seen many blitzes on Hillcrest Lutheran Park right now. And, and, and something's got to happen big. They need a big play. They need a big sack. Again, the pitch to Elysiac. He's knocked out of bounds. Jake Carr over there to get him for Hillcrest. The young man has great speed. He seems to get outside very quickly. And again, you got to recognize the fact that Bill Ask is doing a great job over there blocking for him. Well, nine man, you know, probably more, obviously more so than most uh, uh, categories, is a speed game. It's a short field, only 80 yards, although that'll be extended to 100 next year. But if you get a guy with a corner and he can run, that's trouble. Hanson straight ahead. He's shy of first down by a yard, yard and a half. That's going to bring up fourth down. Interesting call here for uh, Cromwell. Interesting call. Yes, and, sir. And, 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 and probably don't want to punt right now. But it looks like they're going to bring the punt team on. I guess he don't want to put himself in a hole by not going, by, by not punting and giving them good field position. I think that's exactly what he's thinking. Keith Burks that uh, doesn't want to give up the ball, but he'd much rather see Hillcrest have to go 60 or 65 mm -hmm. yards than 40. Nyberg, or excuse me, Elysiac will kick it away. There's a line drive. Kildee's got it. Looking for a block. Gets one. Kildee at the corner. That's something. Well, he's still on his feet. Still driving ahead across the 31-yard line and a penalty flag on top of it all. Let's see what that's about. I think we got another face mask call. Boy, if that's the case, more bonus yardage there for Hillcrest. More yardage. You only saw one red jersey, and that was in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be plus for them. They, they, they got to feel good about that play. You got a nice return by, by your returner, and all of a sudden you get a corner tank on. So, hey, you shorten the field up. As you see, 10 yards on the face mask penalty. Here's Kildy at the corner. He avoids that tackle. Who's got him? Right there. Not much of a hand in there, but just enough. First down at midfield. This is Keller. Keller looking for the first down stick. He's got it plus a couple more. Very good run. I mean, very well designed play and, and negative and positive yards were gained out of that because he did a great job reading his blocks and running. Gain of 13 on the play for Jesse Keller. Well, there's good blocking right there. Kildee knocks his man to the outside, giving uh, Keller a chance to jump inside. Just a little off tackle play, and back did a good job reading the blocks and uh, bounced it outside. First and ten, Hillcrest at the Cromwell 27. Drive complete. That's Carr. He's going to be about a yard and a half shy of another first down. So just that quickly, after Hillcrest defense turns the ball over, the offense, with the help of a face mask penalty, right back in uh, scoring territory. I think right now you've got yourself in gear, and Shad is doing a very good job sitting in the pocket and making things happen. The guys are doing a great job catching the ball also and running. 
So right now, you've got a pretty good offensive game plan working for you. Well, Richard Grisbrook said his team plays better in the second half. Obviously, he knows his players. He knows his players. That's exactly what they've good. done. That should be enough for a first down. It's very close. As John Kildy weaves his way inside. Well, I believe it's a little bit short. Yeah, you're right. Half a yard. I don't think they're going to measure it. Nope. Third down. And a little less than a yard to go. But obviously, at this point, of, at this part of the field, that's a two cracks at it right there. That's, that's so exactly. No <laughs> and given the score, too. You've got to take two cracks at this. 2.20 to play as you look at the second half yardage. 2.20 to play in the third quarter. Hillcrest Lutheran dominating the play. This is Kildee looking for the first down. Still alive. Kildee making it all the way. Kildee at the goal line. Just shy. Dumped at the one-yard line. Firemuth finally caught him. John Kildee bounced off a tackle near the line of scrimmage and took it all the way down to the one. That kid made a strong run. Man. That, was, that was a great run by this young man. A lot of this was individual effort. You know, he makes, he's hitting the backfield, he bounces off, he gets tackled again, gets hit again, and all of a sudden he's breaking the tackles downfield, and hey, he drags the man two or three yards. So this is a great run by Kildee. Boy, he's looking for that end zone, isn't he? He's trying to get there. First and goal at the one. Shy at the quarterback. Touchdown. Touchdown. Like you said, Roger, we've got a ball game. He's still yes, got sir. time in the third quarter to play. It's, to play and then you've got the entire fourth quarter. Dan Shine on the quarterback sneak. One yard for the touchdown and Hillcrest Lutheran now down 28-14. Again, we'll go for two. There you get that big push up front. And he's about 6'3 anyway, so if you yeah. get a couple, a little bit of a push and he can fall over forward, he's in the end zone. Stress that body, make him 6'4 if he has to be. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So Hillcrest down now, 28-14. We'll go for two. We'll see what they come up with. And like you said earlier, two-point two conversions make a difference. I can see with the score that they're doing now, if they get these two here, then they're down by this point. Well, they ran for it last time. Carr's going to throw for it all alone in the back of the end zone. He's running it. So Hillcrest Lutheran right back in this football game. What Cromwell has to do now, they got to go to the sideline. They got to figure out what they've got to do to continue to do what they did in the first half. And Hillcrest Lutheran went in at halftime, and evidently their coach, like you said, he knows his players. They're a better second-half team, and they're showing it. Boy, I guess they have. They've dominated this third quarter of play. We've still got a minute and 49 to play. So Hillcrest Lutheran now down by a dozen and alive and kicking in this nine-man championship game. Here's the extra point try. There's the pitch back, and all alone in the back of the end zone is Ronovic. All he has to do is not drop it right that's, there. That's right. And, 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 and you and you got a trick play now here on the two-point conversion. A little reverse action and pass. That was 40 yards and five plays, and then you see very much time did not elapse on that drive, and you still have a minute, 49 seconds to go. So evidently, Hillcrest Lutheran is doing some things they like to do in this ball game. Well, I'm going to guess that Holovic is going to kick another touchback here for us. You guessed it right. Maybe they need to back him up to the 30s. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, Rick Smith would love to run one back, but this guy's kicking well enough. All he's going to do is pick up the ball and throw it to the referee. That's college uh, distance. You know, you kick it from the 40 to the <laughs> right. goal line. That's, that's kicking like you're in college. It'll be first and 10 for Cromwell at their own 15-yard line. So the Cardinals with a long way to go, and the Hillcrest defense suddenly showing a lot of life here in the last few minutes. A lot of jump in their step right now. The momentum has clearly switched sides in this football game. And that it has. Cardinals would love to get a long drive. First play is the fullback, Hanson, and not a whole lot there. He's greeted by a lot of red shirts. Jesse Arbuckle was there, among others, number 22. John Ronovic, 35, also in on that stop. Eight of a couple yards. It'll be second and eight. Get a stop here, and all of a sudden put yourself in a pretty good field position uh, to begin the fourth quarter. You may have something there. You bet. The pick. The fire move. Fire move. Jake Carr brings him down. 
That'll bring up third down and about five yards to go. So big play coming up here for both teams. Simple play, pitch it back, and everybody run out there and block like crazy. But uh, Carr interrupted that. Yes, he did. Made a good defensive play. Played off the block and, and got right into the play and made the tackle. Third and five for Cromwell. Nyberg. Complete the flyer move. No, he dropped it. Had it and dropped it. Would have been a first down. Instead, they'll have to kick it away. Hit him right where the coach said hit him in the hands. Killer defending for Hillcrest Lutheran. So another punting situation coming up for Cromwell. Cardinals think, average 47 uh, points a game, so they don't punt very much. No, they don't <laughs> punt very much at all. You know, when, you, when you're averaging that many points for a game, and again, you don't want to get too conservative right now. And right now, the they last three drives haven't been in their favor, and you've had some good things happening. And again, you've got... Um, Kildee on the return. Kildee on the return. This time, very good coverage of the punt by Elysiac. A lot of white shirts around the ball. Number 72, Mike Johnson there to make the first hit. So Hillcrest Lutheran, despite their relatively short run back, still in very good field position. They'll start first and 10 in, exactly. at their own 36. 27 seconds to go. You know, one big play, put them in field, put them in position for another score. A lot of time to go in this football game. Boy, what looked like a blowout in the first half. In fact, was a blowout through the first half of the game and suddenly turned into a real competitive football game. First and 10, Hillcrest. Dive for Keller. Well, got back to the line of scrimmage, maybe, but certainly nothing more than that. Johnson, or excuse me, Hanson on the tackle for Cromwell. Now well, he lost a yard. It'll be second and 11. Dan Scheid with a pretty good day going. 118 yards. They won't get a playoff before the end of the quarter, and that's it. So a 12-point game with 12 minutes to go. So we've got a lot of time still to play in this football game. And the Hillcrest Lutheran Academy Comets very much showing signs of life. That's the end of three quarters. Cromwell, 28. And Hillcrest Lutheran, 16. All right, Hillcrest Lutheran with a 12-point deficit, but still an entire quarter to go. They have come alive with their passing game, Rufus, and we should mention that doesn't happen unless your offensive line is doing a good job. And that Hillcrest Lutheran offensive line, reading left to right, guard to guard, Alex DeWolf, John Ronovic, and John Randall have done a good job in that third quarter. That's, that's correct, and they've been doing, they're giving the quarterback great time to throw the ball, and you see what's catching the ball now. Second and 11 for Hillcrest, out of the shotgun, Scheib. Under some pressure, eludes one man, still on the move. Shive going to run for it, gets back across the original line of scrimmage, plus maybe a yard. That'll bring up third down. And about nine. Shive back there, all of a sudden a lot of white shirts running around. Number 72 there was Mike Johnson. And he did the right thing, tackled by Elysiac. He, he learned that time not to just throw the ball up to Grants. And um, he, he do better taking a little short game as opposed to throwing in somebody else's hand. Third and nine. Big pressure by Johnson. He gets it away. Intercepted by Hanson. Well, as soon as I say he do the right thing, he throws it up to grabs. <laughs> and I guess pressure will do it sometime to you. But. Well, it will. And again, I think it's a case of here you got a senior quarterback playing his last game of high school football, trying to make a big play, and sometimes uh, those are the ingredients for something bad. That's yes, what yes. happens. It'll be Cromwell's ball when we return. They'll have first and 10 at their own 38-yard line. There you see the interception. And Mason Hansen right there. Good position as Newt Ronovic had no chance. On the Carex scoreboard, Cromwell leading Hillcrest Lutheran 28-60. Rufus, as you point out, the pressure is not the only reason for the interception. The, the pressure is not the only reason, Roger. And you can see he's throwing off of his heel. He's being, he's jumping in there, throwing the pass. And even if you've got a good arm, like we talked about, you can't make that throw. That's a tough throw for any kid to make. And it's a tough throw for any um, player at any level to make. Right now, most coaches tell you just throw the ball away or take the sack. 
First and ten, Cromwell, the pitch back to Elysiac, cuts it inside, first down. What you do when you throw that ball, you gave Ma uh, Mason Hansen a chance to get his second interception of the day. The tackle there by John Kildee of Hillcrest Lutheran. But a big first down run by Elysiac. And Cromwell has gone two possessions now and kicked it away, something that uh, they're not accustomed to. I would think they're going to come back smoking here because uh, the situation really hasn't changed from late in the third quarter. If they can uh, score here, it might be enough to put it away, but we'll see. First and ten. This is Hanson, the fullback. He's stacked up at the line of scrimmage. You can see Hillcrest trying to pull the ball away, but he hung on. And Lee Jackson has a busy, busy day today. He's had 18 carries for 99 yards, and this young man's playing on both sides of the ball very well. So when you've got players like Mason, uh, like Hanson, and Oleziak doing things on both sides of the ball, it really makes the team feel better when they're on the field. Gain of three, second and seven. Cromwell at the Hillcrest Lutheran 28-yard line. This is Oleziak. Caught in a bear hug down there by Hillcrest Lutheran's Newt Ronovic. Still about three yards shy of first down. To make this uh, play work, the lead blocker's got to get something done. Well, he tried to get a block, but he, he kind of missed his, and the inside guy just slid off and made a great tackle. Third and three for Cromwell at the Hillcrest 24. They don't get it. Good play, good play. What do you do now, Roger? Hanson, the ball carrier. John Ronovic on the stop. Oh, they'll go for it here. <laughs> go for it. Absolutely. Huh? Bear in mind, now, the clock is the big enemy for Hillcrest Lutheran. Not only a 12-point deficit, but the clock under 10 minutes in the ballgame. And uh, a running team that picks up a few first downs, they can chew up a lot of time. That's correct. That's, I, mean, I see that being a factor right now. It's... The player down on the field is Jesse Arbuckle. He's a senior, 5'10", 150. And Jesse's been having a good day today. He's been around the ball a lot. He's made a lot of big tackles in there. Just didn't see what happened on that play. Well, he was in the middle of the pile. If I'd guess, if I had to guess, I'd think somebody maybe fell on him. Well, we don't have any uh, replay to show that, but uh, we'll see it. Uh, they're talking to him. He's obviously able to tell him what's going on, where he's hurting. And hopefully that'll be a minor. And I think you need him on that defense. He's been around the ball quite a bit. And like I said, he's flying around, making hits. And, you know, it could have been one of his own men that hit him. Uh, well, while they administer to Jesse Arbuckle, we'll take a break on the Car X scoreboard with just over nine minutes to play in the game. Cromwell 28 and Hillcrest Lutheran 16. Well, Jesse Arbuckle is up on his feet. They're still talking to him. He hasn't moved very far. Just from the way he's walking, Rufus, it doesn't appear that anything's hurt particularly. No, it would be that right shoulder, but I don't know that. He may just have gotten knocked a little silly may have that gotten, pile up. May have gotten hit a little bit from the backside, dinged by one of his own men. Okay. Rufus can spot Jesse Arbuckle here. Okay, he was hit in front uh, yep. by a blocker. Yep, he got dinged pretty good. He got dinged pretty good. Guy was behind him and one was in front. He just got dinged pretty good, and that does happen a lot of time. But he left under his own power with a little assistance. Back in action, here's Elysiac. That's a first down as Cromwell tries to grind it out for another touchdown and add to their 12-point lead. That was a big first down, especially in the fourth quarter here with uh, time running down and you know, with Cromwell in the lead, hey, that stop would have been major for the for Hillcrest Lutheran. That's Gary Smith from the uh, gray long sleeve shirt talking to Arbuckle, longtime trainer here in the Twin Cities area. First and 10 at the 19 for Cromwell. Straight ahead is Hanson. What I can see, Roger, was that um, Arbuckle was moving his hands as if he'd gotten dinged somewhat, you know, a little stinger in there. And that may have, may have what had happened to him. He just got hit from the, um, from a bad position, and he got a stinger in there. 
Well, we don't know. I suspect he may be finished for the day, but uh, there's no uh, sign of serious damage, so hopefully that'll be the case. See what we can find out here in just a minute. Three yards on the run by Hanson, second and seven for Cromwell at the Hillcrest Lutheran 16-yard line. They'll try it again, same play with a flag down. Lillian's on the field. Maybe a little update for us, Lillian. We've got an update on Jesse Arbuckle. You can see he is seated on the sidelines right now. Medical coaches tell me that he had been hit in the chest and his head and his neck did snap back. They do not feel as though there's anything serious going on right now. He basically got his bell rung pretty good. He's sitting on the bench. He is talking to coaches, resting comfortably, and they believe they'll probably get him back in the game. Okay, Lillian, thank you very much. Well, that's good news for not only Jesse Arbuckle, but for the Elkrest Lutheran fans as well. He's up on his feet now, as you see, but they'll make 100% certain that he's ready to go before he comes back in the game. Second and 12 for Cromwell. Following the penalty. Nyberg's going to throw for it, looking for fire move. Oh, almost a great catch. Oh, wow. Had great. his hands on it in the end zone, but couldn't quite hang on. No kidding. He made a great diving effort for that catch. And now, uh, fire moves is a great receiver, and you know, so he extended his body just to try to find himself in position to catch this ball. Good throw. Almost a great catch. Great effort, I can tell you that. Yeah, two players diving for it. Jake Carr, number 12, defending for Hillcrest Lutheran. That'll bring up third and 12 for Cromwell at the Hillcrest 21-yard line. Clock moving, 7.47 to go, and a flag down again. I imagine we had two players moving at the same yeah. time, and I don't know what game, I don't know any game you can play with you move <laughs> at the same time. I think it was just a miscommunication in some, on somebody's part, but... Yep. Uh, Indication is motion. <laughs> Double motion. On Double that motion, one. <laughs> yeah. You get two for the price of one on that one. <laughs> the penalty by is declined. Hillcrest is going to make him do something on fourth down. Fourth and 12 for Cromwell at the Hillcrest 21 yard line. Seven and a half minutes to play in the fourth quarter. The Hillcrest needs a stop here, no question about it. Yeah, they stop it here, and they got a chance to get the ball back in there and then go down and make some happen. Big rush, screen pass right over the middle. Hanson, what a call. First down. What a call. I think he got, got just enough. Just enough. He got knocked down. Carr was in on the tackle again, but I think he got just enough for the first down. We'll see where they spot it. That was a good call here. Ooh, I'm yeah. not sure now where he got that spot. Yeah. <laughs> I will take another look at this. I think this is going to be close. He may be short. There you see the replay and Carr with a good hard tackle. I thought he'd gotten enough forward motion. I don't. Ooh, just. Oh, he got the point of the ball. <laughs> the Hillcrest players don't think so. But they're going to give him the first down. You couldn't get much closer than that, Roger. Right? Oh, I'll you tell you what, you're right. <laughs> Even by a half an inch wouldn't have been enough. There wasn't much to measure there, but he got just enough. Look at that. Beyond the stripe. Beyond the stripe. <laughs> How much of the ball is beyond the stripe? I don't know, but not much. Hanson again straight ahead as Cromwell continues to grind away at the defense and also grind away at the clock. That's the key item here. 6.50 to play in the football game. And a score here should have pretty effectively ended. Right. Eight of five. It'll be second and five. That call, I got to say, was a great call. You know, on fourth down, you got everybody coming, and then all of a sudden you throw a screen pass, and it's effective. That really was a backbreaker. This is second and goal. At the five-yard line, the pitch to Elysiac. And there's a good defensive play by Hillcrest. First man to get up there and make some contact was Smoot Radovic. And he slowed him down and gave his teammates some time to get there. Holding is the call against Cromwell. So they'll bring it back. Well, the Cardinals with a great opportunity here, kind of shooting themselves in the foot. That's right. And, and, and with time running down, you know, you're trying to keep them from scoring as a team from Hillcrest. And... And, you know, Cromwell, hey, it doesn't matter because they've got the lead, and right now they want to get a score out of this. And that was a big one. 
Now, Keith Bergstedt's been coaching for 12 years. Why the doesn't he have any gray hair in there? I don't get that part. <laughs> The guy who's been coaching that long should have some gray hair. He's got to have some somewhere, unless he does a, you know, he's he's calm all the time, and that's kind of hard to do. Maybe so. Elysiac has a not for the first down. Not, excuse me, not the first down. There is still, uh, that was second and goal at the 16-yard line. That'll bring up third and goal at the six. This young man's had a big day with the football. Big day. Just toss it to him. Let him run out on the outside. Outside game is his game. And he runs hard as well. Hillcrest Lutheran has taken a timeout. You're looking at the Cromwell huddle. Mm -hmm. Elysiac with 118 yards. And 165 pounds. He runs, he runs more like a 180, 190-pound guy. And um, in this game of nine-man football, you've got to be, I guess, lean and fast. You're lean and mean. <laughs> and in good shape, because if you're a good enough athlete, you're going to be playing all day. No question. On both sides of the ball. You'll see that on both these teams, certainly. And they've been a high-power scoring offense all season. They've, they've had a good average of scoring uh, about 30, 47 points per game. And, uh, for them today to be a little bit less than that is, is, is really something for um, Hillcrest Lutheran to be looking for. Well, Cromwell has yet to convert a third down in this half, but they have converted at the right time as they get the touchdown from Elysiac. Six-yard touchdown run by Dan Elysiac, and that should pretty well put it away. Yeah, that was a big play. They could have stopped him on this drive, and they had a chance to really make a ball game out of it and really come, cut the deficit of the game. And uh, from that touchdown, it really kind of throws him back in the back end. Yes, it does. 34-16 on the six-yard touchdown run by Elysiac. I presume they'll go for two. And only 5.51 to play in the game. And Hillcrest may well be out of time. They'll go for two. Nyberg going to pass for it. That's shy, looking for Elysiac in the end zone. A little bit underthrown. Carr back there defending for Hillcrest Lutheran. But even with the uh, unsuccessful two-point attempt, Cromwell still very much in control after this touchdown run by Elysiac. And you're right, Roger. Six yards for the score. Dan Elysiac, 5.51 to play in the football game. And the Cromwell Cardinals try to win their third nine-man title in the last four years find themselves leading by 18 on the Car X scoreboard. Cromwell will kick it off with just under six minutes to play and they're holding an 18 point lead. You know, until that last drive on the Cromwell was over five and third down conversion. Yeah. For the half. That'll be a touchback mm -hmm. as it goes over the head. Uh, Jesse Keller. So first and 10 for Hillcrest Lutheran at their 15-yard line. 42 yards in 12 plays, but the big item there, 526 off the clock. And that's as big a stat as anything right now. Yeah, with the fourth quarter and uh, you being down by 12 points, that would have been nice if you would have stopped them on that fourth and long and got the ball back. Yep. But Cromwell looking to be in pretty good shape. They've got uh, Hillcrest Lutheran looking at 65 yards for a score. There's a screen pass right over the middle. Hanson. Nick Hanson. Just beyond the 20-yard line. Or right on it. Are they going to spot it? Nope, beyond it. Not the 21. Well, if I guess, I guess if it worked one way, you can try it for your, on your team Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Maybe, maybe it'll work. Hey, they, as we said earlier, they're not going to leave anything in the playbook now. Can't do not it at this stage. Dive to throw. That's complete. Ronovic. Ronovic run out of bounds near the 35-yard line. At this point, Roger, I think they need to go into a hurry-up offense and try to get downfield and score as quickly as possible and come back out and, and have a big uh, defense play. Nothing fancy about this. Newt Ronovic, the right end, just coming off the line of scrimmage. Knocked down there by Fryer move. Here's Hillcrest. Throwing again on first down. Complete to Hanson, but not too much there. Three or four yards at the most. And on the tackle, 
They keep him in bounds. The timeout situation, Cromwell has three, but probably won't need them. Hillcrest Academy with two remaining in the, in the football game. Four yards in the play, second and six for Hillcrest Academy. Again, that was prime moved on that tackle. He's going side to side. Guy will throw about every down. Down the sideline, that's complete to Keller. Keller may go all the way, he does. Where have you been all day? Yes, indeed. <laughs> Where have you been? Jesse Keller, 42 yards for the touchdown. That was a good catch by Jesse Keller. Stayed in bounds, and the pass was thrown. Uh, Shad did a great job throwing the pass up field, and it was folded right over the defensive back head. And you know, this is one of those judgment calls on the defensive back part. He didn't get enough depth, and he thought he could intercept that pass. But that was a great throw and catch. Jesse Jordan, the defender there for Cromwell, and as you saw, Keller just behind him, and that was enough. Elkrest obviously going for two with a little over four and a half minutes to play. Going to the end zone, the pass was intended for Jesse Arbuckle, but he got bumped coming off the line of scrimmage, and there was really no opportunity to complete it. So the two-point conversion attempt, unsuccessful, but with four and a half minutes to play, 437 specifically, still remaining, Hillcrest Academy right back in it. I got to stop saying bad things about it. And every time I think they're out of it, they're right back in it. They're right in it. <laughs> Not again, bad things. I just thought Cromwell was in good shape. Exactly. And then you see, again, you see Danny Shade just step back in the pocket and have good protection. His line's doing a great job blocking for him. And he just throws right. a great pass upfield. The offensive line for Hillcrest Lutheran has been a big part of this second half. They've done a very good job. Shied with lots of time to throw there. And Keller with an opportunity to get behind the defense. So now we have a 12 point game again. That didn't take long either. No, sir. It's a two-possession game again, and they can win with a couple here. Now, onside kick, Rufus, with uh, 37 or too much time left? Hey, hey. You know, I was thinking the very same thing. We'll try <laughs> onside kick it and try to get the ball back and uh, go down and score again. But I see they've got the onside team up uh, for Cromwell, and so they're waiting for it. So evidently, they're thinking the same thing we are. Holovic will kick off for Hillcrest. The only thing to be determined is how far. Firemuth deep for I think they're going to try it. It looked like they're heavy to the left side there, don't they? Yep, yeah. they're here. Ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by Cromwell. Mm -hmm. Officially, that's a penalty. Mm -hmm. Out of bounds of the kickoff. Now, it's the option of the receiving team to take the ball where it goes out of bounds, I believe, isn't it? I think so, yes. And and then once it goes out of bounds, you just put it at that spot. Or either they'll give an option, like you said, to take it um, and kick, have them kick it over again. No, they're going to take it. There's the Hillcrest scoring drive. Now well, that's economical. 65 yards in a minute and 14 and four plays. Cromwell takes the ball at their own 34-yard line. So again, the Cardinals, with just over four and a half minutes to play in the game, a chance to grind it out and end it. Although every time we think that's what's happened, Hillcrest comes bouncing right back. They go straight ahead with Mason Hanson. He's right at midfield. And, and what Hillcrest Lutheran has got to do now is try to strip the ball, try to make a fumble, cause a fumble, do something to get the ball back so the team has a chance to go down and score. You still have two timeouts left, and um, so you might as well use them and uh, wait till the clock. You know, don't let the clock run down too much before you take, take the timeouts. Yeah, they're going to be trying to pull the ball loose here if they can. Gain of six on the last play, second and four. Coming up to the four-minute mark. That's Hanson again, but he's going to be a yard and a half or so shy of first down territory. Hillcrest Lutheran with two timeouts, but really in a bind as to when and how to use them. In order to make effective use of the timeouts, they need to get the ball. Mason Hansen, we'll see how the rest of the game develops, but he's near the uh, prep bowl record for carries in a game. That's number 31 right there as he takes it deep into Hillcrest Lutheran territory. Inside the 25-yard line, that'll be a first down. I believe that's 31 for Hansen. The mm -hmm. record for the uh, prep bowl is 34 by Nathan Marker of Chatfield a few years ago. So 
Hanson coming up on that. And this young man's been a workhorse on both sides of the ball, too, and he continues to play hard. So, like we said earlier, he knows what it takes to win, and they've been here for the last four years, and he's been a part of that. Well, I think what he uh, what he did is to uh, make an impact early in the game, and they got that big lead. That's a lazy act. And that makes it a lot easier for you, too. Right now, the clock is not in their favor, not in Hillcrest's favor. It's more in favor of um, Cromwell. Second and five. Cromwell now really in the driver's seat with two and a half minutes to go, or not quite two and a half to go. Second and five at the Hillcrest 19-yard line. There's Elysiac. Elysiac, that'll be a first down and a little extra. Still plugging away. Now, Lezak is a tough runner. You know, he's he's in, inside the 10. That'll be a first down. Tough young man. He runs outside strong, run inside, and think about it, he'll be back next year. He's only a junior. Hmm. There's a the lead block by Hanson, as you saw. Bounced off one man, kept churning. You can see Hillcrest trying to strip the ball, but uh, unsuccessfully. First and goal at the 9 for Cromwell. Hanson again. Down near the two-yard line. Well, last year at this time, Verndale beat Cromwell, as we mentioned earlier, to end the Cardinals' winning streak at 38 games, but they're right back this year and undefeated and uh, about to win their third nine-man title in four years. So a nice bounce-back year for Cromwell. And again, Roger, that says dividends about their program also. It just shows that these kids and the coach has the same philosophy each year, year in and year out. To come out and establish the kind of team that, you know, is capable of winning it all, and this team has done that. Elysiac stacked up near the line of scrimmage, although I'm not sure that if you lose, if you lose after winning 38, then go undefeated, I'm not sure that's bouncing back from what? <laughs> <laughs> right? No, no. <laughs> Everybody liked to bounce back from a 38-game winning streak, wouldn't they? Hey, I'm telling you. <laughs> like to have one. <laughs> <laughs> you are right, sir. There's the uh, successful winning coach, Keith Bergstedt. Winning coach, not uh, any less success on the other side. Elysiac is dragged down on third down, so now Cromwell will have fourth down, but it's incidental at this point because the clock is under a minute. Timeout is taken by Hillcrest Lutheran with only 46 seconds remaining in the game. I think this is pretty much in the bank. But, yeah, depending uh, on what they want to do here. But I got to say, Hillcrest Lutheran did a great job coming out in the second half and playing some very good football, and I think they are... They'll bounce back next year, go back and, you know, get these young men that are coming back and understand that it took a lot for you to get here this year and you didn't do it just by coming, to, uh, showing up every day. You did it by hard work and uh, being consistent and that's what they're going to do again next year and I think they'll be a tough team and you got to say anything about Cromwell because, hey, they've been here. Well, what the Comets did here was turn a first half blowout into a competitive game for much of the second half by scoring the uh, first uh, two touchdowns of the second half. That's right, and, and, and they the game. make it a very good ball game. Well, Cromwell with maybe another record in sight. They've run the ball 65 times in this game. The purple record is 66. I think we'll get a tie for it right here. I believe so. I believe so. Wow. Well, that's the rushes. Fourth and goal at the six-yard line. There's the uh, record-tying carry and a touchdown for Elysiac. This is that young man's fourth touchdown of the day, if I'm correct. I think that's right. He's had four touchdowns today. So he's been a workhorse, and this young man's only a junior. And uh, he should be back just as... That's a straight lead-off tackle with uh, Mason Hansen doing the blocking in front, and he follows the blocks and puts his shoulder and head down and, and runs hard. And, oh, the ball came out and fell right back in his hand. What a gift. How about that? <laughs> when things are going your way, they seem to go your way all well, day. That's, that's the second time that's happened to Cromwell today. The ball has come loose right at the goal line. They go for two on the extra point. They're going to come up short. Well, when you're going good, you're going good. You're going, good. going good. <laughs> Laying on your, lying on your back, and the ball just falls in your hand. Can't that's much better than that. 40 seconds to play in the game, the unsuccessful two-point conversion by Cromwell, but uh, that'll impact only the final score, certainly not the outcome of this football game. Nope, and again, he had that record time rush for, for a touchdown. Well, if this guy looks tired, for good reason. <laughs> 
three touchdowns, over 100 yards, a lot of carries. We'll get the official numbers later on, but he's been busy. Well, he and Hanson have done a terrific job. And we spoke earlier, the Hill, the uh, Cromwell coaches and other players have talked often about that offensive line, and they've mm -hmm. done a terrific job for the Cardinals today. And that's where it starts. Yep. You don't have two guys uh, over 100 yards, let alone one, unless that offensive line is getting a good push. Exactly. And then, then again, that's, <clears throat> like I said, that's where it all starts. And um, these young men have done a great job running the ball. To rush the ball six to six times in a ball game, that means your line is doing a great job blocking, and that's a lot of blocking for anybody to be in the game to, to block that many plays. You know, if you ran it 66 times every game, you'd never lose. You'd never lose. Not the other guys do. <laughs> Wouldn't have a chance to have win forever. Runs. Kickoff by Johnson is short. Taken there by Arbuckle. Glad to see Jesse Arbuckle back in the game for Hillcrest. He got dinged a little while ago, but he's backing at it, so good for him. 35 seconds to play in the football game as Arbuckle heads for the sidelines. And I think what Coach is doing yep. now, he's giving some of his young players a chance to get on the field. They're well, going to put a whole new team in. We'll pick him up as best we can. I saw Bill Nelson, number 14, come on, 6 feet, 160, and a junior. As Richard Risbert knows it's over, but he's going to give some guys a chance to play. Nelson's the quarterback, intercepted by Mason Hansen. Hansen dragged down inside the 15-yard line. I'll tell you, Roger, Mason Hansen's been all over the field today. Oh, he's... You know, offensively, defensively. This young man has played a lot of football, along with the Jack and the other guys. We may have to make him a player of the game somewhere. No question. Yeah. So Cromwell, with an insurmountable lead as it is, gets the ball back as Mason Hansen celebrates a big day in his final high school game. And that's his third uh, interception. Three interceptions, over 100 yards rushing. Doesn't get much better than that. Rick Smith, number 22, now at quarterback for Cromwell. As the Cardinals also get a lot of players in the game. Ball carried by Leif Swenson. He's a sophomore fullback, number 32. As you see the clock winding down. And the Cromwell Cardinals, for the third time in four years, are the champions of nine-man football in the state of Minnesota. The celebration begins on the Cromwell sideline, the smallest school in the tournament enrollment-wise. But they play awful big. They play very big. <laughs> they know they they're do. the smallest school, but that's, they play very big. And uh, that's, like you said, again, it goes out to the community and the kids uh, for them to be able to do the things they do to get themselves in this position every year. Well, as we said uh, a moment ago, they bounced back after having a long unbeaten streak ended by Verndale in this game a year ago, although well, by the same token, if you're bouncing back after a 38-game <laughs> winning streak, I'm not sure how much of a bounce back that is. Obviously, your program's humming along in pretty good shape, and that clearly is the case with the Cromwell Cardinals. Well, they erased the scoreboard so quickly. Didn't write down the final score, Jeff. Didn't write down the final score. 40 to 22, 40 right? 20. Mm -hmm. Boy, they clear that scoreboard in a big hurry. I didn't <laughs> keep my notepad up to date and almost got lost in the shuffle there. Hey, they, they, uh, they almost got their average today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now they're headed now to the sidelines where they'll very quickly make the trophy presentation as Coach Keith Bergstedt looks on. This ought to be a short post-game speech. Yeah. Way to go, guys. Way to go, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you did what we asked you That's to. right. They didn't do very much wrong today. They jumped out to a 28-0 lead at halftime. And while they certainly didn't coast in because Hillcrest Lutheran uh, scored the first couple of touchdowns in the third quarter to make it uh, competitive and interesting, in the end, Cromwell, probably a little too much speed and certainly just too much of a ground game. for them to win this football game. There's your final score. And they're celebrating in Cromwell. It'll be a nice ride home. There's Hillcrest Lutheran Academy on the sideline. 
They'll receive the runner-up trophy. You know, I, I think as you're a coach, Rufus, and you can testify, obviously you want your team to win. But you want them to play hard and hopefully play well. And if you can accomplish that, then it's not a bad day. It's not a bad day, Ryan. And the whole thing is, you know, both coaches should be proud of their teams. And Gil Chris Luton has nothing to be ashamed of. And, you know, they've been run up and they've gotten here. And um, as a coach, you know, that's what I try to encourage my guys to do, to go out and have fun, play hard, and uh, play together as a unit. And, and, and once you do that, you know, the guys have a better feeling for themselves after the ball game. And, you know, somebody's going to win, somebody's going to lose. And um, you try to understand teach them that losing is a part of, of the game and you know you always want to be a winner but still you got to be able to accept the fact and take positives out of the accomplishments that you've made now Cromwell celebrates and the best thing is it, it it's painful when you lose but when you're this age you tend to get over it you tend to bounce back you, you know, know you try, bounce back try not to let it take it let them take it too hard I think the coaches That's take it exactly harder than the players <laughs> well you're right but you know when you're 16 17 18 years old you find out pretty quickly that uh, your mom and dad love you, and the sun comes up in the morning, and uh, most things will work out just fine, and you made a good effort, and that's the way it goes sometimes. That's right, and it's only a game. That's exactly right. <laughs> and, you, and you're playing it to have fun. Now, I'm not sure you can convince a lot of these guys of that at this moment, but soon enough, they'll realize that. And that's what they got to realize. If they continue to play the game, it's going to get tougher, but, you know, it's, to get better, you sometimes got to go through the, different, the ups and downs of being a, uh, a good athlete. And sometimes well, that's right. All the football players you see playing that game did not have great success playing throughout their career. Well, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it, Everybody would right? be doing it, and everybody <laughs> want to change. <laughs> That's right. You wouldn't have enough uniforms. Kind of sorts out the guys who really want it from the rest. That's right. And it's well, just the guys who really want to be a part of it and continues to do it. Cromwell celebrating, that is not a new concept. As we've said, they do it often uh, at Cromwell High School. They're a third state championship in the last four years. And the one year they didn't win was a runner-up finish last year, so... They have much to be happy about. That'll be a nice bus ride home, that's for sure. No question. And, and when you're getting hardware from a ball game, or when you're getting anything, there's positives that come out of it. And, you know, you take that runner-up trophy or that championship trophy, and you go back and you put it on the, on the shelf, and you have that to look at the rest of your life. And as a player that participated in the game, you can always have something positive to look at when you go back to your school and say, hey, I was a part of this, and I was there when this was happening. Nine-man championship again for the Cromwell Cardinals. As they celebrate on the sideline, you see in front of them the Adrian Dragons as we get ready for 1A coming up here very, very quickly. Doesn't take long for the uh, games to turn over. That's the only thing I don't like about this. I'd like the celebration to be just a little longer if they could figure a way to do it. Just <laughs> you know, really, get the guys out at the middle of the field, give them the trophy. I think that would be nice. But mm -hmm. when you're playing six games in a day, I guess that's hard to do. It makes for a long day. And I guess the guys, like you said, they got to celebrate on the bus ride home and you know, maybe go down to the Mall of America and have a good time before they leave to go back home. <laughs> time to do some shopping before they head back north, north, right? I'm sure the parents are down for the game, and you know it's time to take <laughs> mom and dad out to the mall. Let's spend a little money. Or vice versa. <laughs> or vice versa. Yeah, I don't, think, I don't think anybody's taking mom and dad out. I think mom and dad are taking somebody else. I think we got that backwards. <laughs> well, the Cromwell Cardinals, again, with reason to celebrate, and the crowd here will turn over pretty quickly as well. All right, uh, Lillian McDonald is on the field with the winning coach, and this man ought to be smiling. Yes, he certainly is. Keith Berglund, coach, congratulations on another winning victory. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, last year, it was a loss. This must be a great feeling today. Yeah, you know, we had a, played a great team last year in Verndale, so, you know, anything could have happened, and kids got, got up 28 nothing. I hate the big lead at half. Oh, uh, we had to suck it up. We, we stunk for a while there, but then we started playing Cromwell football and took it to them. Did you have any concern when uh, Hill, Hillcrest was coming back? Well, you had to. You know, they made two in a row on us, and we were kind of, we weren't moving to the ball, either side of the ball very well like we can, and finally they got a little wake-up caller, I guess, and got her done. When you get ahead like that, there must be something you tell your players, that this game is not over until it's over. I've never learned it. Last week was kind of the same thing. It's, I've always had a struggle with that. Tough thing. The kid thinks it's over, I guess. One of the key players for uh, this game today is standing right next to you, Mason Hansen. Happy birthday and congratulations. <laughs> yeah, th thank you, man. Thank you very much. Um, it's a great feeling when state championship. Uh, last year we couldn't quite make it, but this year, thank God. Thank God. It's a great feeling. Big day for you. <laughs> uh, no, I'd like to earn my own one day, maybe. Who knows? Uh, congratulations to you. Two TDs, three interceptions, and I think a couple extra points. To 
Well, uh, it's luck. I could say it's luck. I mean, our team, our team is a team. We have no players that stick out. We have no star athletes. Our team meshes so well together that that it's all a team effort. I mean, those interceptions, the quarterback was rushed by my linemen. Other guys that he could threw to were being defended by my cornerbacks. It was all it's just a team effort. And you're working both sides of the field. How is how is that? Uh, you know, you've got to be in great shape to do something like that. That's, that's the nine-man standard, ma'am. That's uh, the, we don't we only have a. Uh, 73 students are uh, uh, enrollment to 73 so we have to play both sides of the field we only have 30 players on our team so so it's i mean it's it's really it's really difficult and it's really it's really something else to be able to play both sides and, and they, they, other teams do too so it's not like an, an advantage or anything how does a young man like you keep your head together in the metrodome in a championship game like this when you're playing both sides of the field and you're so far ahead at halftime it looked like i kept my head together out there i was flipping out i i, I was i was on the fritz i just, I know I was I wasn't very uh, very much together at all, <laughs> but uh, I'm glad we won. How about some of your other teammates now? What 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 are the other praises you can sing for them for now? There's Daniel Lee Jack. He's a great running back. He's in the back there with me. He's he's a real hard runner, and he'll be here next year. He's just a junior. And there's there's three guys that have been so much to me through my football career: Seth Aho, Kirk Farmuth, and Mike Johnson. We've been friends our whole lives, and they're captains with me. And and we 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 really it, this is this is really important to us to win this. Kirk, congratulations again, and to your team. Have a nice time and happy birthday again. What a way to celebrate. And there you have it from the halftime. Uh, quite a celebration down here for Cromwell beating Hillcrest Lutheran. And we'll have more coming right up. There's your final score in nine, man. Cromwell over Hillcrest Lutheran Academy by a score of 40 to 22 for the Cardinals. Uh, again, their third nine-man championship. In the last four years, as the uh, Cromwell football program under Keith Berkstadt continues to hum right along, is he the only coach in America who hated a 28 to nothing halftime lead? Did I hear that correctly? I, I heard him say that, but I couldn't understand just what he was saying. I, I didn't know. I know which I had a 28 to nothing halftime <laughs> lead in the championship game. Adjust my headset here. All right, <laughs> let's look at our American Dairy Association players of the game. Both from Cromwell on the offense. Uh, not a difficult choice. Number 17 is Dan Elysiak. 27 carries, 143 yards, and three touchdowns here at the Prep Bowl this morning. So the young man, and uh, only a junior, as you heard a moment ago, a uh, big day today and probably more big games in his future. The defensive player of the game, also from Cromwell, Mason Hansen's number 15. Three interceptions. That ties a Prep Bowl record. He returns them for 33 yards and also found time on the other side of the ball for 32 rushing attempts for 110 yards and based on his work with uh, Lillian we give him the interviewee of the game as well no question he was a great interviewee and uh, he said hey he wasn't all together out there on that field but you know you sometime on the field you're never together but you're just doing things you're in the right position and you're making the plays but a great young man to have um, as, a, as a guy to play of the game and not only that he twice referred to Lillian as ma'am I like that man. Yeah, very respectful young man very good nice job so a big win here for uh, for uh, the uh, Cromwell Cardinals, Mason Hansen, a big day, and uh, that's just the start of it. Five more games to go with uh, Class 1A coming up, a replay of last year's championship between Adrian and Cook County, and we'll be back after these messages.